Pittsburgh. This is Chuck Thompson along with Jack Quinlan welcoming you to the seventh and deciding game of the 1960 World Series between the New York Yankees and the Pittsburgh Pirates on behalf of your hosts, the General Motors Corporation and the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Once again, here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, the weatherman has given us absolutely ideal weather for baseball. The temperature, just as we came on the air this afternoon, 70 degrees, and another not quite so bright but sunny afternoon. Not quite so bright because there is a very noticeable haze over the ballpark here at Forbes Field this afternoon. But other than that, weather conditions are perfect. And uh, the song that all of the ball players were singing around the batting cage prior to the ball game today, of course, was one called There's No Tomorrow. As Casey Stengel said yesterday, this thing has now settled down to a one-game series. And as he so often has been in the past, Mr. Stengel is more than just a little bit right again. All that has gone before is meaningless insofar as this seventh game is concerned. And it matters not that the Yankees have scored 46 runs on 78 base hits in six games to date. They must win today or it's all in vain. And should the Yankees lose, of course, people who look back on this series would forever ask themselves, how could the Yankees score all of those runs and still not win? And, of course, too much cannot be said about the great relief hurling of little Elroy Face in the three previous Pirate wins. But unless he is able to repeat, if called upon this afternoon in the seventh and deciding game, those previous efforts will today not mean a thing. Dick Grove will present the lineup card for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and charging out of that dugout off the third base side comes Casey Stengel. And uh, we're just uh, a couple of moments away from the big one, the seventh, the final, the deciding game of the 1960 World Series. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is the announcement on the uh, playing and singing of the national anthem, Ronnie Saracen. And the band here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh and our national anthem. The game of the 1960 World Series is being brought to you from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Hurry on down to your show, honey, and catch yourself a great big deal. You'll find out you can save some money on paper made big deal. Like a pre Mark three, old man alive was two forty nine, not a dollar ninety five. So hurry on down to your show, honey, catch yourself a deal, a great big deal, a great big paper made big deal. It's Paper Mate's Big Deal. The Paper Mate Capri Mark III pen, regularly $2.49, is now just $1.95. 
Yes, the Capri Mark III, the pen that positively won't skip, even writes over butter, is now yours at the big deal price of only $1.95. And your paper made is unconditionally guaranteed. If it doesn't perform, we'll replace it. So get a big deal. Get a paper made Capri Mark III, was $2.49, now just $1.95. So won't you hurry on down to your soul, honey? Catch yourself a deal, a great big deal, a great big paper make big, big deal. the Yankee batting order for the final game. Leading off, second base, Bobby Richardson. Batting two, shortstop, Tony Kubek. Batting three, Roger Maris, right field. Batting four, Mickey Mantle, center field. Batting five, Yogi Berra, left field. Batting six, Bill Scourin, first base. Batting seven, Johnny Blanchard, the catcher. Batting eight, Cletus Boyer, third base. And the pitcher, Bob Turley. The Pirates will bat with Bill Verdon, hitting number one in center field. Dick Grove playing shortstop, batting two. Bob Skinner back in the lineup, batting three and playing left field. Rocky Nelson bats four and plays first base. Batting five in right field, Roberto Clemente. Number six hitter, Burgess, the catcher. Batting seven, Don Hoke at third. Number eight hitter is Mazeroski, the second baseman. And then the pitcher, Vernon Law. And as Richardson steps in for the New York Yankees, and we come to the payoff game of the 1960 World Series, it is again with a great deal of pleasure that I turn this microphone over to the man from Chicago and the Chicago Cubs, Jack Quinlan. Thank you, Chuck, and hi once again, baseball fans. Here's Richardson leading off. The fine Yankee second baseman takes the first pitch from Vernon Law, a curve outside for ball one. The umpires in this ball game from the National League, Bill Joukowsky behind the plate, Nestor Shylock of the American League at first base, Dusty Boggess of the National League at second. Line drive, hit right back to Groat, and he nails it for one out. Richardson lines to shortstop Dick Groat. Dusty Boggess of the National League at second. John Stevens of the American League is the third base umpire. Stan Landis from the National League is down the foul line in left field. And Jim Honachick of the American League down the foul line in right field. One out of nobody on as Richardson hit a screaming line drive right back to Dick Grote. Here's Kubek, the Yankee shortstop, left-handed batter. The pitch to him is a ball that's low and inside. In the series so far, Kubek has 10 hits in 27 at-bats for an average of 370. He's driven in three runs. Left-handed batter who, during the course of the season for the Yankees, hit 273. Here's a pop foul down the left side out of play, back into the crowd. And the count on Kubek is even up at ball one and strike one. Vernon Law has won two of the three Pirate victories in this series. The other one was captured by Harvey Haddix. In game one... Law beat Art Dittmar 6-4 here at Forbes Field, and Vernon Law also won game number four, 3-2 over Ralph Terry at New York. Kubek lifts a high pop-up out into short right. Mazeroski back on the grass, makes the catch to gone. Kubek pops up on a change of pace curveball to Bill Mazeroski, and they're two gone, and the Bucks whip that ball around the infield. The Tiger at third base, Don Hoke, flips the ball back to Vernon Law. Here's Roger Maris now, the Yankee right fielder. Bill Stafford and Bobby Shantz, a right-hander and a left-hander, warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Maris, hitting 320 in the series, he takes the first pitch of fastball from Law inside for a ball. Rogers had eight for 25, two homers, two runs driven in. Bob Skinner playing left field for the Pirates, first time we've seen him in over a week. Here's the pitch to Maris, a ball that's outside, two and nothing on Roger. Bill Burden in center field and Roberto Clemente in right. It's Don Hoke at third, Dick Grote at short, Mazeroski at second, and Rocky Nelson playing first. Burgess catching, and tall Vernon Law on the mound. 2-0 to Maris. Roger takes a straight call right over the plate, belt high. Two balls and one strike. Two out and nobody on base. The 25th World Series for the New York Yankees. They have 18 world championships, seven of them under Casey Stengel. Here's the 2-1 pitch on the way. Fastball inside Damaris, and it's 3-1 now. Frank Crisetti coaching the third for the Yankees. Ralph Houck down on the first base coach's box. 3-1 on Maris with two gone in the top of the first. On a hazy afternoon, but sunny at Forbes Field. 3-1 pitch. A foul ball. He tried to check his swing, and the ball jumped off the bat and went right back here to the screen. 3-2 on Maris with two gone. As Chuck told you earlier, these bombers have really been hitting. They've scored 46 runs and made 78 hits. They have a team batting average of 341 in the first six games of this series. 
Now the windup by Law. 3-2 pitch to Roger Maris. A swing and a high pop-up on the infield. In foul territory, moves third baseman Don Hope. Down the line, he's got it. Retired the side. Three up and three down at the top of the first inning for New York. And after half an inning, it's the Yankees nothing and the Pirates nothing. Well, the sports writers here have made the Yankees favorites to win this ballgame and the World Series. However it goes, today is my last chance to urge you once more to try that superlative new Gillette Super Blue Blade. Thousands upon thousands have since the opening game, and they've discovered a degree of comfort and satisfaction they never thought possible. In fact, you'd be amazed at the number of men who have written Gillette that when they first shaved with the Super Blue Blade, they would scarcely believe there was a blade in the razor. So why not try it? You get clean shaves, refreshing shaves, so fast and easy, why, you just got to try it to get the picture. Credit that to edges produced by a special process that is exclusive with Gillette. Graduate technicians call this a scientific breakthrough. To make a trial even more appealing, Gillette has a special that's a knockout. You get a supply of Gillette Super Blue Blades, a modern Gillette Super Speed Razor, and trim travel case, all for 89 cents. Separately, Gillette Super Blue Blades cost 69 cents for 10, a dollar for 15. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Center fielder Bill Verdon starts it off with the Pirates. He's had five hits in 25 at-bats in the series, an average of 200, well below the 264 that he hit during the course of the regular season. Verdon, however, has been a standout on defense through the first six games in center field. Bob Turley on the mound. During the course of the year for the Yankees, he won nine, he lost three. Included among his nine wins was one shutout. Here's the windup by the big right-hander. First pitch to Bill Burton. A ball that's high and inside. Well over the last six months since April, each team has played 160 games, but this is the only one that counts. 154 regular season games, six World Series games, and this one, Game 7. Here's a swing and a long drive to deep left center. Yogi Berra moving back. He's under the ball. Should make the play and does, and there's one out. Burton flies to the left fielder, Yogi Berra. One gone, it brings up the National League batting champion, shortstop, and captain Dick Grote of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Grote has had only five hits in 24 at-bats for an average of 208 in the World Series. During the year, he hit 325, good enough to lead the National League. Setting up the Yankee defense, Barra in left, Mantle in center, Maris in right, Cleet Boyer at third, Tony Kubek at short, Richardson at second, and Moose Gowan at first. Pitch to Grote, high over his head, ball one. Charlie on the mound has a World Series record of four wins and three defeats. Two years ago, he won two games in the series against the Milwaukee Braves. One and nothing pitch by Turley. Swinging a high pop fly out behind short. Here's Kubek back on the grass. Barra coming in. Kubek calling. Still backing up. He's under the ball and makes the play. Two gone. Grove pops up to the opposing shortstop, Kubek. And here's Bob Skinner, who's been out of action for a week with a jammed left thumb. Skinner has had one for three. Played in only the first game and jammed his thumb, sliding into third base, and he's been out of action ever since. During the season, Skinner hit 273, clubbed 15 home runs, and drove in 86 runs. Two out, nobody on base, the bottom of the first, no score. The Yankees and the Pirates with all the gold on the line, the blue chips on the table. It's the end of the line. Here's a curve, a slow curve thrown in by Turley, and it gets the inside corner letter high. One strike on Skinner. Mickey Vernon coaching at first base, Frank Osiak at third. Jam crowd at Forbes Field. Wind up. Oh, and one pitch. Skinner takes a slow curve outside. A ball and a strike. Skinner, left-handed batter. Big, lanky fellow from San Diego. Here's the pitch by Turley. Here's a fastball foul back here, and it's onto the net right behind the plate. A ball and two strikes. Skinner was signed by the Pirates on the strength of his fine showing in high school and American Legion ball back at La Jolla and San Diego. He's one of the most respected left-handed batters in the National League. The plate umpire, Bill Joukowsky, now has called time. Evidently, a ball got away from somebody in the Yankee bullpen out here. Stafford and Shans continuing to throw just in case Turley has trouble. They're two gone, nobody on base, the last half of the first, no score. 
A ball, two strikes on left-handed swinging Bob Skinner. Turley rocks back and fires a curve, and it's inside. 2-2. 300 feet down the right field line. Then the high screen, which extends from the foul pole over to right field at the 375 side. 436 to right center. 457 to the deepest part of left center. And here's Turley winding. 2-2 on the way. Ball high and outside. Yes, sir, the marbles are all on the ground in this one. It's now or never. This is it. The Pirate victories have been by scores of 6-4, 3-2, and 5-2. The Yankee wins have been 16-3, 10-0, and 12-0. Three balls, two strikes on Skinner with two gone. The windup and the pitch by Turley. A ball four. He walked him high and outside. So there's the first base runner of the afternoon. Skinner walks on a 3-2 pitch, and it brings up the first baseman, Rocky Nelson. Nelson's had two out of six so far in the series, a 333 average. During the year, he hit an even 300. The Rock hit seven home runs and drove in 35 runs. The Pirates have not been hitting during this series the way they hit during the course of the season. They had a team batting average during the regular campaign of 276, better than anybody in either league. During the World Series, however, the Pirate team batting average is 241. 100 points below the Yankees. Skinner on first and two out. Pitch to Rocky Nelson. Curveball, it's inside, ball one. Johnny Blanchard doing the catching. Elston Howard was hit yesterday and suffered a broken bone in the right hand. Blanchard doing the catching again today, and Yogi Berra stationed once again in left field. He's well off that foul line, however. They're playing Rocky around to the right in the Yankee outfield. Skinner on first, two gone. Pitch to Nelson. A ball, it's down low, 2-0. Oh. Bob Turley won game number two right here at Forbes Field when he beat Bob Friend 16-3. Turley has had six days of rest. He should be as strong as a bull. He was a 700 percentage pitcher virtually all of 1960, but his performance was a bit disappointing in comparison with his great season of two years ago. Turley stretchy, now he backs off the rubber. Skinner, a very fast man on first base with two gone in the bottom of the first, no score. Skinner takes his lead, and Turley fires the pitch. A curveball, strike on the inside corner at the knees. Nelson looks at the plate, then looks back at the umpire, Joukowsky and raises one eyebrow about two inches over his eye. As if to say, how can you call that one a strike? Two and one on Rocky. The Yankees won 15 ball games in a row, closing out the 1960 season, which set a major league record for consecutive wins closing out a season. Skinner on first base, two gone. Charlie's 2-1 pitch to Nelson. A swing and a line! Each other in the ribs with our elbows, talking to each other, 
Here's the 0-2 pitch to Clemente. Swing at a high pop-up out behind second base. Bobby Richardson backpedaling. He's under the ball on the grass, and he should make the play and does to retire the side. In the inning, two runs and one hit. Nobody left on. And at the end of one inning, the Pirates two, the Yankees nothing. Well, I suppose that Roberto Clemente has about the best arm in the National League. Chuck, don't you think that Rocky Colavito has about the best arm in the American League? Well, Jack, I'd have to say he certainly has one of the best. Well, there's one thing about Rocky I know for sure. He has the toughest beard in baseball. But shaving's a walk to him, certainly to hear him tell it. He says, when I shave with a Gillette Super Blue Blade in my Gillette adjustable razor, I can scarcely feel my beard coming off. There's no pull, not the slightest sensation of discomfort. That's from Rocky, a tough beard man who knows. Tough whiskers are set up for the Gillette adjustable razor, for you adjust it for your own combination of skin and beard. Tender skin, wiry stubble, no matter what. One of the nine settings you get at a turn of a micrometer dial is just right for you. Every shave is quick, clean, and refreshing. And up to the minute Gillette adjustable razor, a supply of super blue blades and modern travel case costs only $1.95. Get yours at a nearby store. Well, the Pirates lead 2 to nothing as we swing to the top half of inning number two, and Mickey Mantle, the Yankee center fielder, will lead off. He'll be followed by Yogi Berra and then Bill Scourin. Mantle has had seven for 20 during the series, hitting at a 350 clip, three home runs, and nine runs driven in. Batting left-handed against right-hander Vernon Law. Here's a fastball inside. Backs him away, and it's ball one. Mantle led the American League in home runs this season with 40. He had 94 runs driven across and a batting average of 276. Pitched by Vernon Law. Fastball fouled off the mask of the plate umpire Bill Joukowsky. And this ball goes back into the box seats behind the plate. One and one on Mantle with the Pirates leading 2 to nothing on Rocky Nelson's home run with a man on. Don Hoke, Pepper Pot third baseman, talking it up for the Bucks. Dick Groth, their captain at short. Mazeroski second. Nelson playing with arms folded in front of his chest over here at first. Now the 1-1 delivery to Mantle. A ball that's inside. He attempted to bunt, jerked the bat out of the way, and the pitch was a curve, and it was in too close. Two balls and one strike on Mantle. Fans around Forbes Field thought that Mickey did attempt and pushed the bat at the pitch, but Joukowsky says no, he did not. 2-1 pitch. Change up. Swung on. Well hit right center. Here's Verdon racing back and over. He's under the ball. He makes the catch. curveball to deep right center, and Bill Verdon caught it. One gone in the top half of the second. Here is Yogi Berra now, the Yankee left fielder, who's had six for 18 in the series, batting 333, with four runs driven in. Berra has played in over 1,800 games in regular season competition, and he now is third on the all-time Yankee list. Lou Gehrig played in 2,164, Babe Ruth in 2,084. One out and nobody on in the second. There's a strike, a breaking ball on the outside corner just above the knees. One strike on Barra. Pirates two, Yankees nothing. We're in the second inning. The windup, the pitch by the Deacon on the way. Fastball foul behind Ralph Houck, the Yankee coach at first base. Hits the box seat railing. And it's two strikes on Yogi Berra. Game number seven, the end of the line. In Vernon Law's two previous appearances in the series, he pitched a total of 13 and one-third innings and won both games. Here's a ball low and away. One and two on Barra. Dangerous Yankee left-handed batter. One away. Vernon Law winding. 30-year-old right-hander kicks the left leg and delivers one and two. Swinging a ground ball. Hope to his left. A diving, scrambling stop to his knees. He throws. He's out. and scramble to his feet and threw the ball to Nelson and there's two men gone. Well, I'll tell you, he saw dollar signs written all over that ball. They're two gone. A great play by Don Hope, the Pirate third baseman. Here's Bill Scour now, the Yankee first baseman who's been one of the hitting stars with 10 hits in 27 at-bats for a batting average of 370. He swings and he misses a long breaking pitch. Strike one. 
Moose has one homer and five runs driven in in the series. Pirates two, Yankees nothing, top half of the second. Two out and nobody on. Law has retired the first five Yankees in a row. Fastball low. Bill Scourin trying to get a hold of one. One and one the count, the windup, the pitch by Vernon Law. Swinging a chopper to the shortstop, Grove should get him. Here's the peg to Rocky Nelson. Retires the five. Three up and three down again in the top half of the second for New York. No runs, no hits, and none left. After one and a half innings of play, the Pirates two, the Yankees nothing. For the cool, refreshing left. Smokey Burgess leads off in the last half of the second inning for Pittsburgh. He's had four hits in 15 at bats with no runs driven in. A 267 batting average in World Series play. During the year, Burgess hit 294 with seven homers and 39 RBIs. Bob Turley, two runs behind, winding the first pitch to Smokey Burgess, a high outside curve. Bill Stafford is still throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Shantz has sat down on the bullpen bench out there now. One and nothing on Burgess, leading off the last half of the second for the Bucks. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung on a shot. Oh, He's going to be held to a long single as Maris quickly fires that ball into Kubek at second base. A line shot between Scourin and the line, and here's Casey Stengel coming out of the Yankee dugout. Burgess got a round on one, and he drilled it past Bill Scourin into the right field corner. It's only the second hit off of Bob Turley, but Stengel is walking to the mound. He's at Stafford, warming up. Shans was warming up in the first inning. Stafford's been throwing since the ball game started, and Casey's looking out to the bullpen, and I believe he's going to make a change here. Of course, you have to go with your best in this one because, as Chuck mentioned earlier, there is no tomorrow. This is it. This is the end of the line as far as it can go, and Bill Stafford's being called in to relieve Bob Turley. Turley worked one inning and a one batter in the second. He allowed two runs and two hits. He didn't strike out anybody. He walked a man. And Billy Stafford, who was in a ball game the other day in New, in, uh, New York and did such a creditable job in a relief role, is being called in. He worked five innings, Stafford, in a ball game at Yankee Stadium the other day, did not allow a run, gave up only three hits, struck out two, and here's Turley heading for the showers. It's up to Bill Stafford now to stop the Pirates. Everyone was wondering, of course, when these Bucks were going to begin hitting. They've uh, not been hitting the way they did during 154 games during the National League campaign. As I mentioned, they had only a 241 batting average in the six previous games of this World Series here in 1960. On the mound now is young Bill Stafford, the newest member of the Yankee pitching staff. He was purchased from the Richmond Farm Club. He has displayed excellent control in his brief big league career. Don Hope now, the scrappy Pittsburgh third baseman, and one of the prime candidates for the most valuable player award in the National League this year. Hope is hitting 250 in series play with five hits and 20 at-bats. He's driven in three Pittsburgh runs. Smokey Burgess on first. There's nobody out. Hope takes one high and inside for ball one. The Pirates two, the Yankees nothing. The ball game in the last half of inning number two. The first six games has drawn a total attendance of 313,130 fans. Burgess leads at first. Stafford fires. Curveball up around the head. Two and nothing on Don Hope. Johnny Blanchard gets a new baseball from the plate umpire, carries it about a third of the way out to the hill, rubs it up, and then fires it back to Bill Stafford. Turley taken out early by manager Casey Stengel. Even though he had had six days rest, Stengel did not care for what he saw. Here's the pitch to Hope. Ball three, long outside. The on-deck man is Bill Mazeroski. Game 
number seven of the 1960 World Series. Burgess leads 3 0 pitch by Stafford as ball four down low. Both walks on four pitches. It puts Pirate runners on first and second with nobody out and brings up the fine Pirate second baseman, Bill Mazarossi. Fleet Boyer, the Yankee third baseman, has called time. He has gone to the mound to talk to the pitcher. Mazeroski hitting 286 in the World Series with 6 for 21. During the year, Billy the Kid batted 273. Up until Rocky Nelson hit a home run in the first inning today, Mazeroski had the only Pittsburgh home run of this World Series. Now, the Bucks have hit two home runs. The Yankees, of course, have eight. Ralph Terry is warming up now along with Bobby Shands and the Yankee bullpen. Here's the pitch. Maz Bunce, a little dribbler down the third base line. They let it roll and it rolled foul. He bunted one down the third base line and about halfway toward third, the ball rolled over the foul line as both Stafford and Boyer, the pitcher and third baseman, went after it. And the runners go back. Burgess to second and Hope to first. There is nobody out. The Pirates lead two to nothing here in the last half of the second inning. Jack Quinlan and Chuck Thompson reporting the play-by-play story from Forbes Field. The ballpark that was built in 1909 and that is being shook to the rafters by the fans here today. One strike on Mazeroski, right-handed batter. Reliever Bill Stafford looks in to get the sign from Blanchard. Burgess leads away from second. Hoke leads at first. Here's the bunt down the third base line. The pitcher has it. Throws to first base. He's safe. The bases are loaded. Bobby Richardson took the throw from the pitcher Stafford, and Mazeroski beat it out for a hit. The bases are loaded with nobody out for Vernon Law. Hit number three by the Pirates. A beautiful bunt by Mazeroski as he laid one down the third base line. The pitcher Stafford jumped off the hill, came over to the foul line, picked up the ball, and fired the first base to Richardson covering, but it was too late, and all hands were safe. And again, Casey Stengel is making his way to the hill. Ralph Terry, a right-hander, and little Bobby Shantz, a veteran southpaw, are throwing in the New York bullpen down the left field line. The batter is going to be the pirate pitcher, Vernon Law. Stengel talking to Stafford and Blanchard. Old Casey's jaw wigwagging up and down out there. He's going to leave Stafford in to pitch to the pitcher, Vernon Law. The Pirates have the bases loaded with nobody out. They lead 2 to nothing here in the last half of the second inning. Law has had two for four. With one run driven in. During the year, Vernon hit 181. He hit one homer and drove in seven runs. Stafford in hot water up to his neck, winding. Here's the pitch to Vernon Law on the way. It's a slider that's outside, ball one. Barra in left, Mantle in center, Maris in right. Straight away. Fleet Boyer, Tony Kubek, Bobby Richardson, and Moose Gowan are on the Yankee infield. Stafford here in relief of Bob Turley in the bottom of the second. The Pirates lead two to nothing. Here's the pitch on the way. Lost swings, and he missed it. Looked like Vernon was trying to go to right field. A ball and a strike on Law. Smokey Bird just started the inning with a shot past the first baseman down the line for a single. Stafford came on, and he walked Hoke on four pitches, and Mazeroski beat out a bunt to load him up. 1-1 delivery. A little half swing, and he fouls it off here into the Pittsburgh dugout at first base. And it's a ball and two strikes. The Bucks two, the Yankees nothing, and the Pirates threatening to get more here. The base is full, nobody out in the last half of inning number two. Beautiful sunny day at Forbes Field. Another piece of cooperation from the weatherman. Stafford winding now. The one and two pitch to Vernon Law. A swing and a tap to the mound. Here's the throw to the plate out. Here's the relay to first base. It's a double play. A double play from Stafford to Blanchard to the first baseman, Scourin. Burgess is forced at the plate. On the play, Don Hoke moves to third, and Mazeroski goes to second base. So Law hits into a double play from the pitcher to the catcher to the first baseman. And now the Pirates have runners on second and third with two out, and the batter is Bill Burden. Fine pitching by Bill Stafford. 
He still is not out of it, however. 22-year-old right-hander coming in here in a toughest spot that he could possibly be in. And so far, he's done a fine job after walking Hope and giving up that bunt single to Mazeroski. He made the pitcher tap into a double play. And now here's Bill Verdon, who hit a fly ball to Yogi Berra back in the first inning. The wind-up and the pitch to Verdon. A swing and a shot foul into the upper deck in right field. Got around on a curveball, and they rammed it upstairs, but foul by a long margin. One strike on Verdon. The last five World Series that the Yankees have been in have gone the limit, seven games. So far, many World Series records have been broken. Many series records have been tied. And there'll be more broken and tied in this ball game here today. One strike on Burden. Pirate teammates on second and third. Two gone in the last half of the second. The Bucks lead by two. Young Bill Stafford winding. 0-1 to Burden. Curveball. Foul down the left side out of play into the upper deck. Hits the roof and drops downstairs. Two strikes to count on Burden. New baseball is handed to the catcher Blanchard. He rubs it up, fires it out to Bill Stafford. This kid may be 22, but he has shown a lot of moxie down through the stretch. And he's done a terrific job in the World Series thus far. He's out in front of the batter, two strikes. Wind up by Stafford. New York right-hander fires a fastball high and inside. He has to jump out of the way. One and two on Verdon. Two hits and a walk loaded him up, but then Law tapped into the double play by way of home plate. Buck runners on second and third lead away. Mazeroski at second, Hoke down the line at third. One and two pitch to Bill Verdon. Curveball line, right center. Here's Maris coming on. Can't get it. A base hit. One run scores. Here's the other man scoring. Maris bobbles the ball and Verdon. shot into right center field. Roger Maris came over, had trouble picking the ball up, and two more runs are in, and the Pirates lead four to nothing here in the second inning. They may charge Maris with an error. It's a base hit, a single for Burton, and an error on Roger Maris for failing to come up with a ball. Two more runs are in, and the lead four to nothing. Here's Grote hitting a foul ball down the right field line, curving back out of play. And it's one strike on Dick Grote. Two runs in in the bottom of the second, and Pittsburgh is now in front, four to nothing over the Yankees. Two runs driven in on the hit by Burden. His fourth and fifth RBIs of the series. Here's a tap down the third base line to the third baseman Boyer. The peg over to first base, and it's in time to retire the side. Roach didn't mean to swing, but he couldn't hold up. In the inning, two runs on three hits, one error, and one man left on. And at the end of two innings of play, it's the Pirates, four, and the Yankees, nothing. Well, I'll tell you, that hit by Bill Burton was a beauty. Even Willie Mays couldn't have done any better, and that's high praise. As you know, Willie's not only a great hitter, but a wonderful team player. And by the way, a real bug about that new Gillette Super Blue Blade. He says, say hey, shaving with a Super Blue is the easiest there is, and smooth man smooth. Well, more than 12 million men have switched to this sensational blade since its introduction only a few months ago. It's produced by a process that is revolutionary and exclusive with Gillette. And what shaves you get? Clean and close? You bet. Yet easier and quicker than you ever dreamed shaving could be. How about trying them now on Gillette's special bargain offer? You get a supply of Super Blues with the new Gillette one-piece Super Speed Razor and Streamline Travel Case, all for only 89 cents. Or buy them separately in dispensers of 10 for 69 cents, 15 for a dollar. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label, with the yellow label. Make the sip test. Extra lively, extra dry, genuine Saratoga Vichy always tastes best by itself or mixed in your favorite drink. Be sure to ask for it by name, Saratoga Vichy. Saratoga Vichy. Yellow label. Saratoga Vichy. Yellow label. Saratoga Vichy. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. 
Here's John Blanchard leading off the top half of the third for the Yankees, hitting a high pop foul out of play behind the New York dugout on the third base side. One strike. Blanchard has had four for seven for the Yankees in the World Series with one run driven in. A batting average of 571 in series play. 27-year-old catcher from Minneapolis, left-handed batter. Here's Law's 0-1 pitch on the way. Swinging a chop right back to the pitcher. Nice stab by Law, and he's going to throw him out. Vernon Law leaps and spears that ball backhanded, and as it was headed past him and out into center field, made a fine play, and he nailed Blanchard. One gone in the top half of the third. The Pirates four, the Yankees nothing. Seven men in a row have now been retired by Vernon Law. It brings up the Yankee third baseman, Cletus Boyer, who has just walked up to the plate with a broken bat, and he's going to have to get a new one back here in the bat rack. One out, nobody on here in the third. Bobby Shands loosening up. The pitcher due up next. Here's the pitch. Swinging a fly ball out into short center. Here's Mazeroski going out. Burden coming on. Maz under the ball makes the catch. And the two men go on. Hector Lopez is going to come out now to hit for Billy Stafford. Hector Lopez, who has two hits in six at-bats for a 333 average in the World Series, right-handed batter, coming out to hit for the pitcher, Bill Stafford. Vernon Law, bat ankle and all, has now retired eight Yankees in a row. Bobby Shantz will be the next New York pitcher. He's warming up out here in the Yankee bullpen. The Pirates scored two runs in the first and two in the second. They lead four to nothing with New York at bat in the top half of the third. Lopez in that crouch, close stance. The pitch to him as they curve its low for ball one. Skinner in left, Burden in center, and Clemente in right. Polk, Grote, Mazeroski, and Nelson around the buck infield. Pitch to Hector Lopez. Swinging a long drive foul down the right field line and up near the football press box and off the roof and downstairs. A ball and a strike on Hector Lopez. On the road this year, the Yankees won 42 games and lost 35. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fastball, and he rams a foul into the upper deck, and a great play is made by a fan. A leaping two-handed catch by a spectator down the right field line upstairs. It was at Yankee Stadium where the Bombers were so destructive and so brilliant against the American League opposition. They won 55 and lost 22 at New York. Here's a shot. Base hit in the hole between Hoke and Grote. Lopez lines a single into left field, and there's the first Yankee base runner. Hit number one off Vernon Law. Brings up the top of the order, Bobby Richardson, one of the real outstanding stars in this series so far. In the first inning today, leading off, he hit a line drive right back to Dick Groth, the Pirate shortstop. Little Bobby Richardson has 12 runs driven in in the World Series, which is an all-time series record. Here's a curve, it's high, ball one. Little fella, but what power. He demonstrated it the other day in New York, Saturday, when he hit a grand slam home run at Yankee Stadium off Clem Levine. Lopez at first, two gone. Richardson swings and hammers one into left field. Bob Skinner's there. Comes in a step and makes the catch to retire the side. No runs in one hit. And one man left on. And at the end of two and a half innings of play, the Pirates four, the Yankees nothing. Well, it's a fact. In all kinds of weather, men perspire. And now, Gillette announces a new deodorant for men. Right guard. It's a power spray deodorant. Just two seconds, a touch of the nozzle under each arm. And you have 24-hour protection. And it's as effective as it is fast. Power Spray Right Guard gets right through for complete coverage where odor begins. It destroys bacteria-causing odor, checks perspiration. Now, no more messy creams or sprays that hit and miss or gummy roll-ons. Right Guard has a pleasant fragrance, and it dries on contact. Leaves you cool, fresh. Right guard costs 89 cents in its bright copper color container. Remember, two seconds gives you 24 hour protection with Gillette's Right Guard, the new power spray deodorant for men. Little left hander Bobby Shantz becomes the third Yankee pitcher of the ball game. He has been in two games, pitching a total of one and one third innings, has not allowed a run nor a hit. Here's a little fellow with 
a heart as big as his entire body. From Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Five feet six and a quarter, 154 pounds. Back in 1952, he was the American League's most valuable player with the Philadelphia A's when he won 24 and lost only seven. Bob Skinner, the Pirate left fielder, leads off against Shands, who is pitcher number three for New York. The Pirates four, the Yankees nothing. Skinner drew a walk and scored on Rocky Nelson's tremendous home run in the first inning. Here's a ball that's high and outside. Skinner has, still has some pain in the left thumb, which he jammed in the opening game here. He has a quite a bit of tape wrapped around the bat handle to cut down on the pain when he swings. A ground ball to the first baseman, Scourin. Up with it, flips to the pitcher covering, and Skinner's out. Scourin to Bobby Shantz, who covered. One away, and here's a hand for Rocky Nelson. Rocky put the Bucks in the lead with a wallop into the lower seats in right field with a man on in the first. The Bucks scored two more in the second. They now lead four to nothing here in the last half of the third. One out and nobody on base. The Pirates tried for their first world championship in many, many years. 35 years. 1925, the last time they raised the world's championship flag over Forbes Field. Chance winding. Little softball fires a curveball that's high to Nelson for ball one. The Yankees are shooting for their 19th World's Championship. In this Game 7, the wrap-up, the final game of the 1960 World Series. Here's the pitch to Nelson. Slow curve, swung on, and hammered foul down the right field line upstairs. One ball and one strike on Rocky Nelson. Again, he gave the crowd a thrill, but this time he pulled it foul down the right field line. New baseball thrown out to the pitcher. Shands looks in, gets the sign from Blanchard, winding now. Little left-hander fires to Nelson, a ball is high, two balls and one strike. One out and nobody on in the bottom half of the third. Pirates four, Yankees nothing. Shams, the third New York pitcher of the ball game, into the windup. Here's the pitch. It's a curve. It's high and inside. Three balls and one strike. On deck is Roberto Clemente, the Pittsburgh right fielder. Well, out here yesterday to watch the sixth game of the series were 38,580. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Nelson. High curve. He walked in ball four. Rocky Nelson gets the third walk. Issued by Yankee pitchers. Curly allowed one. Stafford gave up a walk. And now Shantz has walked Rocky Nelson with one out of the last half of the third. Here's Clemente, who popped up to Bobby Richardson the first time at bat today. Casey Stengel on the next to top step of the New York dugout here at third base, watching everything. Shantz into the stretch. Pitch to Clemente. He bunts foul off here to the left. And it's strike one. Clemente was one of several National Leaguers to hit better than 300. He ended up the year with a 314 average. Don Hope walking up and down here in front of the Pirate bench on the first base dugout. Talking to his teammates. Well, they have figured out that the winning share will be approximately $8,500 for each winner. And the loser will get around $2,500 less than that. Pitch to Clemente. Curveball down low. One and one on Roberto. Yogi Berra deep in left. Mantle deep in center. Roger Maris in right. Rocky Nelson on first. One out. The last half of the third with the Pirates leading four to nothing. One and one on Clemente. Right-handed batter waits. Here's Shantz firing. Swinging the chopper to the second baseman, Richardson. Up with it. Tosses to Kubek one. Relay to first to double play. So the side is retired on a lightning-like double play. And in the third for the Pirates. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And after three full innings of play, it's the Pirates four, the New York Yankees nothing. Hurry on down to your soul, honey, and get yourself a great big deal. You'll find out you can save some money on paper made big deal. Like a three mark three, oh man, the lie was two forty nine, not a dollar ninety five. So hurry on down to your soul, honey, get yourself a deal, a great big deal, a great big deal for me, big deal. 
It's Papermate's Big Deal. The Papermate Capri Mark III pen, regularly $2.49, is now just $1.95. Yes, the Capri Mark III, the pen that positively won't skip, even writes over butter, is now yours at the Big Deal price of only $1.95. And your Papermate is unconditionally guaranteed. If it doesn't perform, we'll replace it. So get a Big Deal. Get a Papermate Capri Mark III. Was two dollars and forty-nine cents. Now just a dollar ninety-five. So won't you hurry on down to your soul, honey? Catch a seven deal, a great big deal, a great big Papermate, big, big deal. Into the top half of the fourth inning, and the New York Yankees send up Tony Kubek, Roger Maris, and Mickey Mantle to try to get back into the ball game. They trail four to nothing. Vernon Law, out after his third World Series win. Here's the windup, and the Deacon fires a strike fastball, letter high. Kubek popped up to Mazeroski the first time up today. Tony, left-handed hitting Yankee shortstop, comes from Milwaukee. Frank Crescetti down here, coaching at third, in his 19th World Series with the New York Yankees. As player and coach. Here's a broken bat pop-up on the left side. Broke the shortstop back on the grass behind third. Makes the catch. Kubek broke his bat and popped it up to Dick Rose. It brings up Roger Maris now, the Yankee right fielder, who fouled out to Don Hope back in the first inning. Roger, the American League runs batted in King in 1960 with 112. One out, nobody on. Fourth inning. Yankees down four to nothing. Here's the pitch to Maris on the way. Fastball swung on, lined in the right field. Clemente is there, and he reaches up to make the catch. A close liner caught by Roberto Clemente in right field in front of the 375 side. Two gone here in the Yankee fourth, and it brings up Mickey Mantle. Mantle hit a fly ball to Bill Verdon the first time at bat. Two out and nobody on. Yankees at bat in their half of the fourth inning, trailing the Pirates four to nothing. Here's the windup. The pitch by Law. Slow curve lined, and it's a base hit in the right field for Mantle. Clemente comes up with that ball. Mickey reached out and hit a slow curve ball between Mazeroski and Rocky Nelson in the right field. Hit number two by the Yankees off Vernon Law. It brings up Yogi Berra, the New York left fielder, who was robbed of a hit by Don Hoke's scrambling diving stop back in the second inning. on first base, two gone. Pirates lead four to nothing. The ball game in the fourth inning at Forbes Field, Pittsburgh. The Yogi Man up there swinging that stick around. Here's the pitch to him. A curveball is fouled back here. Just hits the top of the screen behind home plate. One strike. Well, the vendors have had a busy, busy time both here at Forbes Field and in New York Yankee Stadium. In the first two games here last week, 48,000 World Series programs were sold at Forbes Field. Give you an idea of how these people are buying up things. One strike on Barra. Here's Law stretching, firing fastball outside the Yogi. A ball and a strike. Vernon Law out after his third World Series victory. He has won 6-4 to four and 3-2 to two so far. Here's a curved line in the right field. It's going to be out there. Maybe Clemente runs hard. One-handed catch. Yogi Berra lines to Clemente down the right field line. He caught it on the dead run. No runs in one hit and one man left on. And after three and a half innings of play, it's the Pirates for the Yankees nothing. Well, Smokey Burgess is going to be leading off here in the last half of the fourth inning. The Yankees have been playing him deep all series. Chicago's Jim Landis is about the only man I know who could play him shallow. Jim's got the eye, the speed, and you guessed it, he's a Gillette man. Jim says those Gillette Super Blue Blades certainly gave me a brand new slant on shaving comfort. Before I tried them, I couldn't imagine shaving could be so fast and easy. Men just can't get over the tremendous difference between a Super Blue shave and any other shave. Words can't do justice to the comfort you get. It's almost like wiping your beard away. Super Blue Edges are produced by a remarkable new process that is exclusive with Gillette. Every shave is clean, refreshing. Have you tried the Gillette Super Blue Blade? If not, here's your chance at a bargain. 
While they last, you get a dispenser of Super Blue Blades with the modern new Gillette Super Speed Razor in a neat travel case, all for a money-saving 89 cents. Separately, Super Blue Blades cost 69 cents for a dispenser of 10, $1 for 15. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with the Pirates coming to bat. They lead the Yankees four to nothing. And Burgess, who lined a single into right field the first time up, faces southpaw Bobby Shantz. Here's the pitch to Smokey. Fastball hit on the ground of the second baseman Bobby Richardson up with it. Here's the toss to Scourin, and Burgess, digging down that line, is out by about four steps. One gone, and here is Don Hope. He walked and scored a run in the second, and he's made one of the outstanding plays of the game so far. Scrappy ex-Marine, an ex-professional fighter, Don Hoke. One out, nobody on base, last half of the fourth, Pirates four, Yankees nothing. Chance winding, the pitch to Hoke. Swinging a ground ball to the second baseman, Richardson, up with it. Here's the toss to Scourin at first base, and their two men gone. That brings up Bill Mazeroski, who beat out a bunt down the third baseline to load the bases and set up the two-run rally in the Pittsburgh second inning. Right-handed batter. Here's one of the outstanding second basemen in either league. The wind-up by Shantz and the pitch to Mazeroski. A ball that's outside. He started to go. He almost stepped across home plate to hit that one. It was outside for ball one. Four to nothing. Pirates lead. The ball game in the bottom of the fourth. Bobby Shantz looks in, starts his winding motion. Little left-hander fires a curveball that's inside, above the knees. Too close, ball two. The Bucks scored two in the first inning on Rocky Nelson's drive into the right field seats, and they picked up two more in the second. Four runs, four hits. Yankees, no runs, two hits. Little Bobby Shantz winding. Two-nothing pitch. Curveball popped up, short left. Out goes Kubek. In comes Barra. Kubek calling for the ball in short left, and he makes the catch to retire the side. In the bottom of the fourth inning for the Pirates, three up and three down. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And the score after four innings of play is the Pirates four and the New York Yankees nothing. Well, what do you suppose uh, Johnny Blanchard said to the plate umpire Joukowsky in that last inning, Chuck? Well, Jack, I don't know, but I don't think he asked him if he had tried the new Super Blue Blade. Oh, I guess not. But that is a question that one man has been asking another for several months back. That's one big reason for the startling success of this sensational new blade. Men just can't get over how easy it is to shave with a super blue blade. How quick and refreshing. Its edges are made by a radically new process called by graduate engineers a scientific breakthrough. And they're exclusive with Gillette. Won't you try them? Get a package at a store near you. They fit all Gillette razors in dispensers 10 for 69 cents or 15 for $1. Or take advantage of Gillette's bargain special at stores now. A dispenser of Super Blue Blades, the new one-piece Super Speed Razor, and a modern travel case, all for the low, low price of 89 cents. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label. With the yellow label. Always ask for Saratoga Vichy, the mixer that's bubbling over with good spirits. And remember, Saratoga Vichy comes only in a bottle, the green bottle with a yellow label. Saratoga Vichy. Yellow label. Saratoga Vichy. Yellow label. Saratoga Vichy. WGY, WGFM, connect today. We go to the fifth inning. Bill Scourin leads off, and he takes the first pitch from Law, a strike call. Now the delivery bunted on the first baseline foul, a line drive bunt down the first baseline for foul, and a fan leans over the railing out here and has a World Series souvenir of baseball. Two strikes on Bill Scourin, trying to get something started for the Yankees in the fifth inning. They trail Pittsburgh four to nothing. Activity in the Yankee bullpen. Right-hander Jim Coates is warming up. Swinging a fly ball. Well hit right field. Way back. Back, back, back. It is a home run for Scourin. Into the lower seats in right field over the screen. That's the Moose's second home run of this 1960 World Series. 
and his 11th base hit. A home run by Bill Scourin over the right field screen into the lower deck. And the Yankees have their first run and their third hit off Vernon Law. It's now 4-1 to one in favor of the Pirates. And Scourin leads off the Yankee fifth with a towering drive over the screen into the right field lower deck. Oh, that guy has power. Left field, center field, right field. They try to pitch him away, and he'll go with it and pop the ball to the opposite field, which he just did. Johnny Blanchard up now. Hit one back to the pitcher, and Law made a great stab and threw him out the first time up. A curve is fouled up over the roof on the first base side, out into the street. 0-1. So the Yankees have scored a run here on Scourin's leadoff home run in the top half of the fifth. Pirates now out in front by three runs. Pitch to Blanchard. A ball is wide. One and one on John. Getting down to the tail end of the order. Chance is due up in this inning. Here's a fly ball into short center. Bill Verdon coming on hard. Now he slows up. He's under the ball waiting. Makes the catch. Blanchard looks one to Bill Verdon in short center field. That brings up the New York Yankee third baseman, Cleet Boyer. Popped up to Mazarowski the first time at bat today. Boyer, who had been the leadoff man for the Yankees, was dropped to the number eight slot, and Bobby Richardson, who has shown tremendous power, was elevated to the leadoff position in singles batting order today. Here's a bun attempt. He missed it for a strike. He fouled the ball right into the glove of Smokey Burgess. 0-1 on Cleet Boyer. One out, nobody on base, and a run in. On a tremendous blast by Bill Scourin into the right field seat. The Pirates four, the Yankees one. Here's the pitch. Swing a line drive to Maserati. Two out. Boyer hit a screaming Mimi right back to Maserati. The Pirates second baseman and they're two gone. And here's Chance coming out. He's going to hit for himself. This is a good hitting pitcher, this little guy. Bobby Chance. up only 10 times during the season. He had two hits. Little fella, number 30, right-handed batter. The pitch to him is a strike letter high on the inside corner. Two out, nobody on. Scourin opened up the fifth inning with a home run into the right field seat. The 0-1 pitch to Bobby Chance. A swing and a line foul down the left field line. It's going to be out toward the Yankee bullpen. Two strikes to count on Chance. Yankees in their 25th World Series. Here's the 0-2 pitch by Law. A ball is wide just outside to a right-handed batter. The Yankees have had 18 World Championships. The Pirates have had just two, 1909 and 1925. The 1-2 pitch to Shans. A high pop-up on the right side of the diamond. Here's Rocky Nelson coming in toward the mound. In toward the plate, he makes the catch to retire. Yankees won. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Vernon Law, the pitcher, will lead off of the Pirates. And here to bring you the play-by-play report of the last half of this ball game, the gentleman from Washington, D.C., Chuck Thompson. Thanks a lot, Jack Quinlan, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Bobby Chance, a little left-hander for New York, into the wine. Deals and Law swings and misses strike one. Vernon Law facing Yankee pitching for the second time this afternoon. The last time he batted, he on the second inning with the bases loaded, uh, he bounced into a very quick double play. Pitcher to the plate the first. One strike pitch coming on. He is a little high to the right-hander, Vernon. One ball and one strike now to Vernon Law. <laughs> I have no doubt you can pick up that uh, scream in the background as uh, left-hander Chance deals. Law looks as high inside. He rocks back out of the way. It's two and one now. I recognize that call. It belongs to a Washington Senator baseball fan who was out here. Two balls, one strike to the Pirates, uh, Hurler, Vernon Law. And little Bobby Shands looking down to Blanchard now to pick up on the side. Four to one, the Pirates over the Yankees here on the bottom of the... Swing and a long fly ball deep to left. It may go all the way if it stays there. It is a foul ball at the last moment, a foul ball. Oh, Mr. Law had it hit. It was all the way, far out into the afternoon, but at the last moment... Dan Landis, the umpire down the left field foul line, gave it the wave off. And a tremendous ovation for Vernon Law. Boy, he unloaded. Well, during the regular year, Vernon Law hit 
for an average of 181, but he also had a home run. And he just missed by not more than a couple of feet having a World Series home run. Pitch. Swinging a ground ball up the third base side, gloved beautifully by Cletus Boyer. He throws to first base in time to get Vernon Law for the first out of the inning. One up and one down as Law grounds out to the third base from Cleet Boyer. What a thrill for this uh, jam-packed crowd here at Forbes Field to see pitcher Vernon Law make a bid for a home run. And believe me, that ball looked pretty good all the way down the line. And then just hooked out uh, in the deep left field corner. Top of the order now, Bill Burden, left-hand swinging center fielder, chance into the move. First pitch coming down to Burden. He curved him, swinging the drive to the right side of the second baseman, Richardson. He drifts over about a step and a half, makes the pickup and the throw to first, and plenty of time to get Burden for the second out here on the bottom of the fifth inning. And now here comes uh, shortstop and captain, the leading hitter in the National League, Dick Grote. And this afternoon, against the uh, Yankee pitching, he is 0 for 2, having popped to short and grounded out to first. Right-hand swinger, Dick Grote against the southpaw, France of the little man, Bobby Sham. Into the road now, first pitch coming down to Grote is a curveball that chips off the inside corner of the letters. Frank one to Grote. Curly started the ball game, pitched one inning, and the one man in the second, then was lifted for Stafford, who pitched one inning, and now Bobby Sham. A one-strike pitch, Grote swings, and there's a drive right back at pitcher Sham, and he holds on a line drive right back to the pitcher for the final out of the inning. So the Pirates are three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And the score at the end of five complete now. The Pirates, four, and the Yankees, one. For 61, it's the hot newcomer from Pontiac, the Pontiac Tempest. America's first front-engine rear transmission car. Priced with the compacts, Tempest gives you a winning 130 horsepower from just four gas-saving cylinders. See Pontiac's new 1961 Tempest at your quality Pontiac dealers. Bobby Richardson leads off for the Yankees here on the top half of the sixth inning. And Bob has been to the play 25 times in the series with six base hits, a little bit of everything. He's had a pair of doubles and a pair of triples, a home run and a grand slammer of bat, and 12 runs batted in, which incidentally is a new World Series record of 12 runs batted in in a six-game series. Well, here we are in the seventh, and this is the big one, and here's Richardson to face Vernon Law. Richardson lined out to the shortstop in the first inning and then they hit a line drive to Bob Skinner in left field in the third. Big right-hander Law into the move now. The first pitch to Richardson. He ran up, bunted, and missed. Strike one. Richardson kind of shuffled up to the front of the box and then dropped the bat in front of the ball, but missed it. And a strike. One strike to Bob Richardson. He'll be followed by Kubek and Maris. And the Yankee half of the sixth inning. to go now. Law, who doesn't waste very much time, into the move now, and the one-strike pitch coming to Richardson, swung on a fly ball, hit out of the shallow center, coming out of Bill Bird, and still moving, can't get there, has to play it on the first pop, and Richardson is on with the fourth Yankee hit of the afternoon, a single to center field, a line drive that dropped in in front of Bill Bird, who didn't have any chance of getting to the ball. So with the Pirates leading the Yankees, four to one, in the top of the sixth inning, here is Tony Kubek, 0 for two this afternoon against Vernon Law. He has popped to second and popped out to short. Kubek having a slam-bang series for New York prior to this afternoon's game was hitting 370 with 10 hits in 27 trips. Law sets, throws. Kubek looks, his low inside and a ball. Four to one, the Pirates over the Yankees. Down on the Pirate bullpen, Elroy face and Paddock. Pitch coming down to Kubek. He started a swing and held back on it. Now Burgess spins around and played umpire Zikowski, who says, no, he didn't commit himself. Therefore, it'll be a ball, too. Kubek started a goal and then held off, spun away from the pitch, and the count of two balls, no strike. Well, the Pirates' uh, third baseman, Don Hoke, has come on in to the mound very briefly to say a word or two to Vernon Law. Haddock, the southpaw. Elroy Face, the right-hander, working in the Pirate bullpen in the right field corner. Leadoff hitter Richardson, single to center field. And now here's Kubek waiting the 2 nothing pitch from Vernon Law. He sets and throws. Kubek leaned in as if to bug, looked the pitch all the way, and it's a strike call. Ray on the hands up the bat and then leaned in over the plate and took it all the way. Two balls, one strike. Now 
now Burgess pumps up the sign, holds out the target there for Law, who throws the pitch inside. The left-hand batting two back on the count, mounts up now, three and one. And an uneasy stir from the spectators here at Ford Field. This is a big one. This is for all of the money. This is for the glory and the gold, as they say. The seventh game of the 1960 series. The Pirates lead it 4-1 to one over New York. The Yanks with a runner at first and none out. And the 3-1 to Kubek. He takes all the way. And Law pumps it right in there for a strike two call. So fill the count now. Three and two to Tony Kubek. Stangle now up on the uh, top step of the Yankee dugout down the third base side. Eagle-eyeing every move made by Pirate hurler Vernon Law. He's all ready to go. The set for 3-2. Richardson holds and the pitch is taken low for a ball four. Well, Richardson moves to second base now as Ver Vernon Law has given up the walk to Tony Kubek. And out of the Pirate dugout from the first base side now comes uh, the dandy little Danny, Danny Murtaugh. This will be the first walk issued this afternoon by Vernon Law. And in 272 innings during the course of the regular year, while Murtaugh now confers with his curler, in 272 innings of regular pitching this year, Vernon Law only gave up 40 walks and struck out 120. So a base on balls issued by Vernon Law is almost an oddity, but he walks Kubek. And the Yankees now have runners at first and second. And if you want to look down to the plate to Roger Maris, you could point out that the Yankees have a tying run at the plate. And there's Danny Murtaugh giving that well-known sign to the Forbes Field fans, holding his palm down uh, parallel to the ground, uh, just above his knees, indicating he wants the little fella, Elroy Face, and here he comes. Vernon Law has today this five innings and has allowed the New York Yankees a total of four base hits. He walked one. He didn't fan a batter given up one run, the leadoff home run to Bill Scourin in the fifth inning. Coming on now is Elroy Face making his fourth World Series appearance. He has pitched seven and one-third previous innings and a good hand goes up for Vernon Law. A standing ovation. Listen to this. has been called from the bullpen by Danny Murtaugh in this the blue ship game. As we mentioned, it's his fourth appearance. He has pitched seven and one-third innings and allowed three base hits and two Yankee runs, has an earned run of 2.52. Actually, going back in this series, uh, Elroy Face has allowed no hits and only one walk against the last 17 Yankees to face him. And it's Elroy Face of Forkball fame to pitch to Roger Maris with none out. And Yankee runners at first and second base. Top of the sixth inning, the Pirates lead the ball game by a score of 4-1, to one, and the Yanks have got a little bit of something going for them right now. And Face is out there to see if he can do, as he has done so many times in the past, stop him dead. Maris steps in, Face throws, a strike right over the inside. Some kind of a beef out of Bill Zukowski, the plate umpire. Stomping around out there. Little Richardson, the runner for New York at second base. On at first base, Kubek. Richardson opened the inning with a single to center. Kubek then worked the count 3-2 to Vernon Law and drew a walk. And Elroy Face is now in in relief. Off the pirate right-hander Law. One strike to the left-hand swinging Roger Maris. Face into the set. He deals. Curveball misses outside. And the count evens at one ball and one strike to Maris. What a ball game, and why not? The climax, the finish to the 1960 World Series. And it's been, uh, well, I guess one of the words you could select and be pretty nearly right. You could say it's been a wacky sort of a series. Unusual, to say the least. One ball, one strike to Maris. None out. Yankee runners at first and second. The pitch swing and a high pop-up off the third base side. Back goes Don Hope. Backpedaling. Road is with him. Hope in foul territory. Makes the catch. One away on the runner's hole. The third baseman, Don Hope. Richardson holds second, two back at first. One away now. Mandel had been up to the plate all ready to go, and now Casey Stengel has called him back uh, toward the dugout, and I see that uh, Mandel uh, had forgotten to take that plastic helmet up there. Well, whenever 
whatever you think about the tension and the excitement that goes into a World Series game, uh, here's a, certainly a great pro and many years a polished performer with the Yankees. Uh, Mantle about to step in without the plastic helmet. But he has uh, returned to the dugout, has down the cap, and now steps in. Left hand swinging against uh, the right hand pitching up Elroy Face. One out. Yankee runners first and second. Pirates four. And the Yankees won and face into the stretch. The first pitch coming to Mantle. He swings ground ball right back through the middle. Going hard at the shortstop. Dives. Can't get the ball. The time through the center field for the base hit. And Richardson is going to score. Down to third base goes Kubek. And Mantle has singled through the middle to center field to drive in the second Yankee run. Mantle's second hit of the afternoon. And it's now the Pirates four, the Yankees two, one out on the inning, and Yankee runners on the corners. Mantle at first, Kubek at third, and Yogi Berra stepping in against Elroy Faye. That would be Mantle's tenth run batted in in this 1960 series. afternoon. Oh, for two. Stopped on a tremendous play by Holt, and then he flied out to right in the fourth inning. The pitch swinging a ground ball down the first base side. It is a foul ball at the last moment. Just foul. It took a short hop and kangarooed way up in the air over the head of the first baseman, uh, Rocky Nelson. And when it came down, Mr. Shylak, first base umpire, right on top of the play, gave it a foul call. And as we look down the first base side here at Ford Field, we can see it was not fouled by a whole lot. Drag one. Kubek at third, Mantle at first, one out. Pirates four, Yankees two. And the Yankees are making their move here in this top half of inning number six. And Elroy Face is on for the Buckos to see if he can stop them. The set, the little right hander throws. There are swings, there's a high fly ball deep in the right field. I don't know about it, it may be in there. It is going to be a home run for Yogi Berra. Chasing back goes Don Hoke. He may have a play near the box seat railing. Comes in a little bit. Has it. And that'll be the second out of the inning. As Dowron fouls out to third baseman Don Hoke. Two down now. And the batter will be the Yankee catcher, Johnny Blanchard. Now, the pitch is a ball low inside to the left hand swinger. Blanchard went out on a wonderful play by Vernon Law in the third inning. Vernon made a leaping one handed grab to spear his ground ball in the third, and then uh, Blanchard slid out to center in the fifth inning. As face goes for the move, a little right hander throws, swinging a ground ball down first base way, waiting as Nelson grabs on a knee high hop, trudges to the bag, and tags up ahead of Blanchard for the final out. Well, the Yankees grab four big runs in the inning on a total of three base hits. No pirate errors, none left. And the score at the end of five and one half innings of play, it's the New York Yankees, five, the Pittsburgh Pirates, four. Bob Skinner leads off for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the last half of the sixth inning. Skinner walked in the first inning, and when Nelson ripped one into the right field seat, scored the first run of the game. Nelson with a two-run home run blast in the first inning, and the Pirates grabbed two more. He had the second inning on a two-run single by Bill Burden. But then the Yankees came on with a big four runs in the top of the sixth inning and have taken over now a 5-4 to four lead. And here's Skinner to face the little left-hander Bobby Shantz. First pitch coming down to Skinner. Swing and a fly ball deep to right. Back and waiting is uh, Maris. He's there and makes the grab. One out. Skinner flies out to the right fielder, Roger Maris. Well, here's the hero of the first inning in the seventh game, so far as Pirate fans are concerned, Rocky Nelson. Boy, he bombed one. He really put it in there. 
off starting pitcher Bob Turley of the Yankees. But the Yankees have come battling back via their favorite uh, punch, the home run ball. The pitch to Nelson is swinging a ground ball down the first base side, waiting his scouring. He digs it out neatly, now throws to Chance, the pitcher covering it first, in time to get Nelson for the second down. Two up, two down for the Pirates in the bottom of the sixth, and now it'll be Roberto Clemente, who popped out to uh, second baseman Richardson and then hit into a very sharp double play. Richardson to Kubek to Scourin in the third inning. Ralph Terry and Jim Coates, a couple of long, lean right-handers, are going for Stengel down in the Yankee bullpen in left field. Two out, none on. Yankees five, and the Pirates four. The seventh deciding game. Chance throws. He curved him. Beautiful pitch. And Clemente took it all the way for a strike. Now the little south ball from Ambler PA brings the arm down, throws a fastball, but it's low and inside, and a ball. One and one now to Clemente. A little quiet in Forbes Field right now. One ball, one strike to Clemente. Two out, none on. Last half of the sixth inning, 5 4 the Yankees. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike two. And Clemente went around and around that time. Trying to find that chance curveball. One ball, two strikes. Now Chance in the move. The 1 2 to Clemente. Ground ball hit off the third base side of the mound, fielded by the pitcher Chance, recovers, throws to first in time to get Clemente, and that'll be the final out of the inning. Chance, one of the fine fielding pitchers in baseball, throws out Clemente, three up, three down, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left, and the score at the end of six complete now, it's the Yankees five and the Pirates four. Where'd you get that hat, Sonny boy? Where did I, what do you mean? I'm the fire chief. Say, isn't this the car showroom that's on fire? Not the showroom, Chief. The customers. They're on fire with desire for GM's new special size car, the new Buick Special. It gives you the best of both worlds. Big car luxury and small car economy. Buick Special. My car. See, it's smaller than big, yet bigger than small. It's your car. Buick Special size is the best size of all. It's my car. For economical luxury, set your goal for. It's worth sliding down that firehouse pole for. Best with car, you'll find it in car at GM. Cause it's more to just from free. Value and choice from GM. I gotta go. Wait, what color shall we order your Buick Special in? Red. What else? <laughs> Cleet Boyer, right-hand swinging third baseman for the Yankees in the seventh game, will lead off in the top of the seventh inning. Yankees five, Pirates four. And Elroy Face, all ready to go to work. Pirate right-handed throws. Strike right over the outside corner above the knees. Well, the Forbes Field fans, of course, are hoping that the Pirates will demonstrate that great facility for bouncing back. The pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. Two strikes now to Cletus Boyer. The Buckos of Danny Murtaugh, no less than 29 times in the past season, trailing after six innings, came on to win. Swing and a high fly ball, deep in the left. Skinner digging hard, going to his left, still moving, and now it's Verdon crossing over, and Verdon makes the easy catch in deep left center. Skinner going hard, it looked as though he might not get to the ball, and then Verdon just grew up right in front of it to handle it without any trouble at all. Boyer flies out to the center field of Verdon. And the Forbes field fans now give a good go. Reception to the Yankee hurler, Bobby Sands, who has retired 11 in a row since he's come in the ball game. As a batter in the fifth inning, Shantz popped out to the first baseman, Rocky Nelson. The pitch is a ball. To say the least, Chance doesn't present too much of a strike zone. Now face into the move. Swing and a high foul ball out of play. Behind the plate, back among the spectators. And the count to Chance, one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike, two Chance. Elroy face, 
In relief of Vernon Law, into the move now, and the 1-1 coming down to the right-hand swinger. It's too high, and a ball, 2-1 and one now. Well, this officially will be the end of the 1960 baseball season. And face throws the 2-1 to Chance, cut on a ground ball down the third base side, over the head of Don Hope, the third base, but out at the deep left field corner, racing for the ball is Skinner. Here's Chance around first with a big turn, and then he holds on. And digs back in with a bouncing single over the head of third baseman Don Hope. Skinner got to the ball very quickly at the foul line. And Chance made the big turn at first and then uh, went right back in there. One out, runner at first, Chance, and the top of the Yankee batting order, Bobby Richardson, who has lined to short, lined out to left, and single to center field. And has scored a run. Pirate infield up, a quick throw to first base, but back in time is Chance. Face uh, thought he might catch a little Bobby going the wrong way and almost did. Uh, Nelson was off the bag slightly. And the pitch is taken inside, and that time Richardson squared on the pitch as if he were going to bunt and then took the pitch inside for a ball. In the Pirate bullpen, Bob Friend and Harvey Haddix. Face ready to go again. Looks over to check. Chance throws. Strike. And again, Richardson was taken all the way. Ran the hands up the bat. And looked it over. One ball, one strike. Pirate infield up a couple of steps in double play depth. One out. And the pitch swing. And there's a line drive down the right field side. It is a foul ball. A foul ball at the last moment. A line drive. Hit about halfway down the right field foul line. Out foul by about two or three feet. So the count to Richardson, one ball and two strikes. Richardson taking face to the opposite field, and it wasn't fouled by a whole lot. Chance now taking a leisurely stroll back toward first. He's trying to save a little bit. Of course, when you're in the seventh game of a World Series, you're in there to go as hard as you can go, as long as you can go, and never mind saving it because you've got the whole winter to rest up. Now the one ball, two strike pitch to Richardson. Chance leads first, the set by face, the pitch. High pop-up foul, and it'll be out of play off the third base side. And the count continues one and two. That old baseball bounces around quite a little bit, hit in the upper deck off the third base side, and they couldn't hold it up there, so charged the second-story tennis down the left field side with an error. And the lower box seat fans held on to it. One ball, two strikes. One out, Yankees batting, top half, seventh inning, score, the Yankees five, the Pirates four, final game of the series. Elroy Face now delivers, Richardson swings, ground ball, third base way, Don Hope has, goes to second, that's one, and that's the only play possible. They execute the force of Bob Chance coming in at second base for the second out of the inning. And out at first base on the force is Richardson. Two down now, and the batter will be Tony Kubek. Kubek popped to second, popped out to short, drew a walk in the sixth inning. And that walk, incidentally, was what sent Bob uh, or Vernon Law out of the ball game and brought in Elroy Face. Two out, Richardson the runner at first base. Nelson plays him tight to the bag that way. Face into the stretch, sets and throws. Kubek looks, it's inside low on the ball. Burgess held it up there just a little while for plate umpire Joukowsky to look at. 1-0. And the one nothing pitch coming down. No quick throw to first. Back in time is Richardson. No tag made by Rocky Nelson. And the one nothing no. Another quick throw to first. And this time, Nelson made the tag, but not in time. One ball, no strikes. To the batter, Kubek. Two down. Richardson uh, edges out to that lead again. Face sets. Looks over to first, then turns and throws. Swinging a line drive in the right field. Clemente to his right stops, and he's got it for the final out of the inning. Kubek lined out for the right fielder, Clemente, for the Yankees in the seventh inning. No runs, one base hit, no pirate errors, and a man is left. The score at the end of six and one-half innings of play. The Yankees five and the Pirates four. <laughs> The sleek new 1961 Pontiac is comfort designed to give you more headroom, legroom, footroom. It's all Pontiac on a wide track. Powered by the new Pontiac Trophy V8 engine with a new gas-saving fuel induction system. 
See the new Wide Track 61 Pontiac at your quality Pontiac dealer. Yes, you can see the new Pontiacs now. Stop in today. The official paid attendance has just been made known here at Forbes Field. For the seventh and the final game, 36,683 paid. 36,683 paid. We're ready for the bottom of the seventh inning. Chance on the mound, taking his final tune-up tosses. And against the little left-hander will come the southpaw swinging little round man, Smokey Burgess. It'll be Burgess, Don Hoke, and Mazeroski in that order in the pirate half of the seventh inning. And what a ball game. What a series. All ready to go. And now the Ford's field fans begin to warm to the task as Burgess steps in. And we're ready to go. The Yankee outfield has cut around a little bit toward the right field side to Smokey. Burgess this afternoon singled between Scourin and the bag at first base in the second inning, and then grounded out to Richardson in the fourth. The pitch is a strike called as Chance uh, trotted the curveball in there. The seven-game total attendance in the 60 World Series, 349,813. Yankee bullpen active again with Coates and Terry. Now the one-strike pitch coming down to Burgess. Chance throws, curves, swinging a drive, hit right back through the middle, base hit to center field. Burgess starts the Pirates in the seventh with a swing to the center. That brings up Don Hoke, and we're going to get a pinch runner for Burgess. Joe Christopher has come on to run for Smokey Burgess. Christopher he is running for Burgess at first, and the batter will be Don Hope. Hope through the walk in the second inning, grounded out to second base in the fourth inning. The base hit by Burgess a moment ago is the first Pirate base hit since back in the second. Now the left hander throws. Hope takes inside and almost hit him. Just turned away from an inside offering. Ball one. Well, where Terry and Coates have been kind of throwing rainbows down there in the bullpen in left field for the Yankees. They're beginning to hum the ball a little better right now. Leadoff hitter Burgess, single to center field. He's replaced by runner Christopher, who leads first base. Scouring tight to the bag. The one nothing pitch coming to right-hand batting Hope. He takes it inside for a ball, too. Ran the hands up the bat and shrugged away from an inside offering that's very nearly hitting. Two balls, no strikes. And the tension mounts with each and every pitch. Boy, we've had goosebumps standing out on us ever since the uh, first pitch of this ball game. It's been that kind of an afternoon. The Yankees five runs on seven hits. The Pirates four runs on five. Chance is ready. The two nothing to hope. He takes again inside and a ball three. Three and oh. Stengel is up on the top step of the Yankee dugout, stirring around nervously. Now your 3 nothing pitch coming down to Don Hoke. Here it is. It's a strike over the inside corner of the knees. 3-1, and one, and Don was uh, evidently under wraps, taking all the way. Now looks down third base way to the coach, Frank Osiak, to see what, uh, what could be brewing on this 3-1 uh, delivery. To the Pirate third baseman, Don Hoke. Christopher, the runner at first, none out in the Pirate half of the seventh. The set by chance, the 3-1. It's a foul ball on a bunt. Tick the bat foul at the plate, three and two. Hope gave little or no indication of the bunt that time other than running the hands up the bat. There wasn't uh, too much body action on his part. He just uh, slid the hands up the bat and chopped at the ball. Bunted it foul at the plate, three and two to Don. Well, we'll keep an eye on Christopher over there at first base. Three balls, two strikes. None out, Christopher the runner at first. Scour naturally holding him on, playing him tight to the bag. And little chance being a left-hander is looking right down his throat. Here's the stretch, the set, and the throw to first base. But diving back under the throw is Christopher. No play. 
stance uh, on that pickoff throw, so usually sidearms the first base. Now time is called as Hoke spills out of the batting box. Just as Chance was about ready to throw. Well, it's an old uh, waiting game. Hoke says, uh, I have to wait on you, then you're going to wait on me a little bit. Here we go now. The lead by Christopher. Chance into the stretch. He sets, and the 3-2 to Hoke. There goes Christopher. He swings a long fly ball deep in the left field corner. Barrow coming on is there to grab it. Makes the catch, and now racing back to a first base. Ahead of the throw goes Christopher. Well, Hope could have hit it pretty good. A line drive, but Barra got a good jump on the ball. Racing toward the foul line, was able to haul it in for the first out of the inning. One down, and now the batter is Mazeroski. And before Mazeroski steps in, uh, Blanchard has gone to the mound to talk a little bit with Bob Shantz. Uh, third baseman Cletus Boyer is in, and out charge and out of that Yankee dugout. Racing up to the mound comes uh, one of the greatest uh, names in baseball, Casey Stengel. Speaking of great names in baseball, Stan Musial is sitting in a front row seat in the St. Louis Cardinal box down along the first baseline. And you look a long time before you find any greater than that man. Well, uh, plate umpire Bill Joukowsky has made a trip up there to the mound and said, well, fellas, we better break up the conference. We've got a ball game on our hands. So Stengel now goes back to the Yankee dugout off the third base side. Boyer takes over his position at third base. Blanchard down behind the plate again. One out of the inning. And here is Mazeroski, who had a bump single to load the bases in the second inning and popped out the shortstop in the fourth. Chance is ready. He throws. Ground ball hits sharply off the third base side. Charging Kubek makes the grab. Throws to second. One out. Back to first. Double play. Short to second to first, a lightning quick double play for the New York Yankees, and they're out of trouble here in the bottom of the seventh inning. For the Pirates, no runs, one base hit, no Yankee errors, none left, and the score now at the end of seven, it's the New York Yankees five and the Pirates four. Where did you come from? I didn't see anybody come in. That's how it is with us leprechauns. Leprechauns? Aye. Right. And will you be kind enough to show me one of them new cars? One that likes a bit of action, like dancing in the moonlight, you know? Why, yes, sir. I've got just the car. Oldsmobile for 61. The action line in performance and design. It's your car. With value that only Olds could achieve. It's your car. You just have to see one, and then you'll believe it's my car. With styling to please either he folk or she folk. And room for a hundred or more of us we folk. That's the star you find when you car at the end. For the more to come. Value and joy from the end. And will you pay cash for your new old, sir? Well, just now I'm a little bit overdrawn at the end of the rainbow. So would you just put one of them nice cars away? <laughs> See the new Oldsmobile today. In that a pinch runner entered the game for Burgess, the Pirates have Hal Smith behind the plate as we go to the eighth inning, and here's Roger Maris. Swings and hits a line drive down at that right field corner. It is going to be a foul ball at the last moment. Bangs off that big wall down there, 300 feet away, and about six or eight feet foul. Just a long strike to Maris, who's looking for his first base knock on this final game. Fouled out to third, lined out to right, fouled out to third. Elroy face on the mound, and Hal Smith is now the Pirate catcher. Top of the eighth, Yankees five, Pirates four. The pitch swinging a ground ball right back to the third base side of the mound. Going hard, face makes a grab, recovers, throws to first in time to get Roger Maris on a wonderful play. Uh, on his follow-through, face came off the first base side of the mound and then had to retreat very rapidly to the third base side of the mound and uh, make the pickup and recover in time to throw out Maris, who was uh, going along pretty good. One out in the Yankee half of the eighth inning, and now here is Mantle, who has two hits in three trips. And a run batted in. All ready to go now. Face into the move. The first pitch to the left-hand swinger is a ball up high. Mantle has knocked in one and has scored one. The big hit in the ball game so far has been a three-run home run blast by Yogi Berra in the sixth inning. And the Yankees lead five to four. The pitch to Mantle. Swing and a line drive caught by the shortstop, Dick Grove. Mantle tried to get one into the opposite field, but Grove went soaring up in the air in front of his line drive to take it for the second down. Joe DeMastry is uh, loosening up for the Yankees down in left field. 
And here is Yogi Berra, the man who put the Yankees in front with a tying fly ball home run with two mates aboard in the Yankee sixth. And that's the way the ball game stands right now in this top half of the eighth inning. Two out and none on. The Yankees five and the Pirates four. And Elroy's face throws. He's high to Barra for a ball. Barra could very possibly have had two base hits in this ball game so far had it not been for a sparkling play by third baseman Don Hope back in the second inning. Look out, Yogi. Low bridge. <laughs> Little face. Let one go uh, high and tight. And Barra had to duck down out of the way. Two balls, no strikes. A little bit of the sign language that the pitchers employ on behalf of the batters. Sometimes that kind of a pitch carries a rather authoritative message. Now the 2-0 pitch coming down to Yogi Berra. Swing and a high pop foul behind the plate. It may make the seats, and I believe it will. Out of play. Two and one. Two out, then on. a 2-1 pitch to Yogi Berra. All ready to go now. Face with a new uh, ball in play. Spent a little time kind of massaging and rubbing it down. Now the little right-hander into the move. The pitch coming to Berra. Swing and a ground ball foul outside of first. Karen's off the box seat railing out into right field where Clemente runs it down. 2-2 two and two to Yogi Berra. Looking at DeMastry down on the Yankee bullpen would make you think that perhaps uh, Stengel might move DeMastry in at short and then put Kubek out there in left field. But let's uh, let Mr. Stengel run the ball club and wait and see. Now the 2-2 pitch to Barra ground a foul ball back on the netting behind the plate. And it's 2-2. Two and two. The Yankees out in front by the narrowest of margins. One run. They lead 5-4. Over the Pirates, who scored two runs in the first and two more in the second and haven't been able to score since. The pitch to Berra is high and away, and the count uh, fills up now. Three and two. Bob Turley started today for the Yankees, gave way to Bill Stafford, and then uh, Bob Chance came on, and he's held the Pirates right where they are. Now the big one, 3-2 pitch coming to Berra, two out and none on. It's up high ball for Berra walks. First walk issued by Elroy Face this afternoon. Stepping in now, the right-hand batting Yankee first baseman Bill Scourin, who led the fifth inning with a home run into the right field seats to give the Yankees their first run. Then the Yanks came on uh, with another one of their big innings. Four runs in the sixth. The pitch swinging a ground ball off that third base side. Backing as Don Hokey one hands it out of the air. Throws the second. Not in time. Hope was powerless to do more than he had, had done with the play. It was a kangaroo hop, kind of a short hop ground ball. Then it took off up in the air much like a pop fly. And Hope backed off under the bouncing grounder. Waited for it to come down. Made a lightning quick throw to second base trying to force Barra but could not get him. And the ruling is an infield hit for Moose Scourin. So the Yankees now with two down have runners at first and second. And here is their catcher, Johnny Blanchard. Blanchard uh, went out in a fine play by Law in the uh, third inning. Then he flied out to center in the fifth inning and went out unassisted to Nelson to end the sixth. Southpaw hitter. And Elroy Face staring down to his battery mate, Hal Smith. Into the stretch now. The little man sets. And here's the first one coming to Blanchard. Outside on the ball. 1-0. Moose Scarron with that infield hit. Deep to third has picked up his 12th World Series base hit in 1960. Time called momentarily. Blanchard backing out of there. Thirty-six thousand six hundred and eighty-three here to see the final game of the 60 series. And what a ball game they're looking at. Face ready, he throws, swinging a high pop foul out of play off the first base side. The count is one ball, one strike to Blanchard.
Crosetti coaching third for the Yankees. Ralph Houck pacing back and forth, up and down in that first base coaching box. Scour and the runner at first. And Yogi Berra down there second for the Yankees. Demastri still uh, loosening up a little bit in the Yankee bullpen in the left field corner. And face now ready with a 1-1 pitch to Johnny Blanchard. Here it comes. Swing and a soft line drive. It's going to be in there for the base hit in right center field. Around third. Headed for the plate comes uh, Yogi Berra. On his way to third goes Scourin. As the uh, right fielder Clemente bobbled the ball momentarily. But Blanchard has looped a shallow base hit in the alley in right center to drive in Berra. For the Yankees' sixth run of the afternoon. Scourin takes third. And Blanchard picks up his second World Series run batted in. A soft line drive that looped out over the head of the second baseman Mazeroski dropped in right center. Scored Barra from second base. Scourin took third. Blanchard is now on at first. Still two out of the inning as Space got the first two men, Maris and Mantle. Then the walk to Barra. The infield hit to Scourin. Blanchard singled. And it's six to four right now. And here is Cletus Boyer who swings in a line drive down the left field line. It's going to be a fair ball all the way up the deep left field corner. That's going to score Scourin without any trouble. Racing toward third goes Blanchard, and they hold him up there. And into second, standing up with a double, goes Cletus Boyer. Boyer rips a line double into the deep left field corner to score Scourin with a seventh Yankee run. Blanchard is held at third. And it's now the Yankees. Seven, and the Pittsburgh Pirates four, two out. And runners at second and third. And the batter will be the pitcher, Bobby Shantz. Shantz, in two trips to the plate this afternoon, has popped out to first and uh, singled to left field. And now he steps in with Yankee runners at second and third. Face into the move. The first pitch to Shantz is low and away. Ball one. drive double down the left field line has knocked in another Yankee run. Seven to four. Chance looks. It's out over the outside corner and the strike is called by plate umpire Joukowsky. One ball, one strike to Bobby Chance. And the pitch swing and a high pop-up foul down the first base side. It'll make the seats, I believe. Chasing over goes catcher Hal Smith with his back in behind the pirate dugger out at about 15 rows. One and two now to Chance. Yankee bullpen standing up down there in left field. Pacing around nervously, watching every move in the ball game. Activity. Bob Friend is throwing, along with Harvey Haddix, I believe, in the pirate bullpen down on the right field corner. Chance, little right-handed batter, waiting now. The one ball, two-strike pitch from uh, face, and here it is. It's too low. And the count is two and two. Well, the walk to Yogi Berra started facing a little bit of trouble here in the eighth inning. Infield hit by Scour and put him in deeper, and then Blanchard singled a drive in a run. Boyer doubled the drive in another. The Pirate right-hander throws. Low and a good save by catcher Hal Smith. Well, that'll fill the count now. Three and two. Full count to Bobby Shantz. With two out. Three and two into the wine. Here's the pitch to Chance. A ground ball is foul outside of first. One-handed by Ralph Houck. Couldn't hold on to it, however. Looks at the baseball, says it's okay, and flips it out to pitcher Elroy Face. Well, the Bucks again this afternoon are facing the uphill battle. They trail by a score of 7-4 to four with the Yankees batting in the top half of the eighth inning and time running out. Now face into the move, and the 3-2 pitch coming down to Chance. A soft fly ball to shallow right, moving to his right and coming in is Clemente. He's there and makes the grab for the final out of the inning. But the Yankees get two more runs in this inning on three base hits. No pirate errors, two men are left, and the score now at the end of seven and one-half innings of play, it's the New York Yankees seven and the Pittsburgh Pirates four. choice from GM. There's nothing like a new car. And this year, GM gives you more value, more cars to choose from, more new models that set a new standard of reliability. General Motors reliability. 
chances are you'll find your new car at GM. Cause there's more to choose from. A new choice from GM. Today's the day to see your GM quality dealer. In that pitcher face is scheduled to lead off in the last half of the eighth inning for the Pirates. Danny Murtaugh's gone to the pinch hitting barrel, and here is Gino Simoli. During the regular year, Gino hit 267 and uh, knocked in 28 runs for Pittsburgh. He did not hit a home run uh, in the 1960 season. He's hitting 211 in the series with 19 at bats and four base hits. He's played in six ball games. Strike is called to Gino, right hand batter. Bob Shams dropped that slow curveball in on. Gino Simoli. Shams into the move now. The one strike pitch to Gino is too high, and he takes a ball. One ball and one strike. In the Yankee bullpen in left field, again, it's Ralph Terry and Jim Coates. Just staying loose. Simoli. Pinch hitting and leading off on the bottom of the eighth inning to see if he can get something started. Shams throws a, looked like a scroogey that caught the outside corner above the knees, and a strike is called. One ball and two strikes to uh, Gino Simoli. I'm not certain that it was a screwball, but it reacted much in the manner of a screwball in that uh, when thrown by a left-handed pitcher to a right-handed batter would break down and away. And a lot of southpaws who use that screwball for a change. Change of pace pitch. Now the one ball, two-strike pitch coming to Simoli. Chance throws. He curved him, swinging a foul ball back on the screen behind the plate. And the count continues. One ball, two strikes to Gino Simoli. Handsome young man from the Golden Gate City of San Francisco. Who uh, does a lot of work in the offseason with boys clubs. One ball, two strikes. Yankees seven, Pirates four, bottom of the eighth inning. And a tense, taut crowd. Here's Chance deals up high for a ball now. Two and two to Simoli. The fans here at Forbes Field are sitting as if they were on a keg of dynamite. You can just feel the explosion that, that could happen if uh, Simone could get the Pirates started. And now the fans begin to warm to their task a little bit. And Chance goes to the wire. The 2-2 pitch coming to Simone. He's swinging a fly ball hit out of the right center field. Dropping in a hurry. Maris coming on. Can't get it. Takes it. Pinch hitter Gino Simone is delivered with a base knock in right center. And that'll bring around the top end of the batting order, Bill Verdon. And now Forbes Field becomes a little more lively. As these uh, Pirate fans try to get into the game with their ball club. Verdon this afternoon has fly to left. Has single to right center to drive in two runs. Has grounded out to second base. One for three. Chance into the move now. He sets. Strike is called as uh, Chance got a good fastball over the outside corner. To the left hand swing, Bill Verdon. Strike one. Runner at first base, Gino Savoli, to say the least. Gowan holds him tight to the bag, the set, the pitch. Swing and a ground ball, hit right toward the shortstop. Oh, and hit Kubek in the face. It hit him in the face, and Kubek has been hurt, and all hands are safe. A bad hot ground ball came up and hit him in the face and bounced away, and all hands are safe, and time has been called here at Forbes Field while Yankee teammates rush along with the trainers to see if they can assist Kubek. Now, I said it hit him in the face. I'm not certain. It could have been in the throat of the jaw. We will know a little later. The ball bounced after it hit Kubek a little bit to his left. And, of course, Verdon is on at first base. Uh, Jack Quinlan, who was looking at uh, Kubek, uh, through field glasses, informs that the ball apparently hit Kubek on the Adam's apple. Kubek now sitting up and being administered to by the Yankee trainer. Verdon is safe. Down to second goes Simoli. A base hit, a bad hop single. Kubek is up now and uh, moving around. Stengel is out there to see what he can do. Trainer Gus Mock broke from the dugout like a sprinter the minute uh, Kubek hit the ground. 
It was a sharply hit ground ball, and Kubek was right in position to make the play and, of course, go for the double play, when suddenly that ball took an unusual hop and came up, and it appeared to hit him in the vicinity of the face or the jaw, and now we have developed, uh, determined that it struck Kubek in the Adam's apple on the throat. Now, the ball bounced six or eight feet to Kubek's left, and, of course, Simone was able to move to second base, and on at first base with a bad hop single is Bill Verdon. Stengel still out there talking to uh, his shortstop, Kubek. Well, Jack, uh, of the many uh, painful injuries a man can sustain in uh, baseball, certainly that is one of the more painful. Oh, Chuck, he took a pretty good jolt. That thing tipped him right over backwards as soon as the ball hit the ground and came up and hit him right in the throat. And he flipped over like a fish out of water, and he just sat there in a sitting position for a while and... Stengel now is looking out toward the bullpen. I believe Joe DeMaestri is going to come in to relieve Tony Kubek. He got a pretty good shot there right in the throat. Well, here's a, a standing ovation for the fine Yankee shortstop Tony Kubek, who was victimized by a bad hopping ground ball that hit him in the throat. And uh, Stengel uh, decides that he will bring Joe DeMaestri into the ball game. At shortstop, and Kubek gets a fine, warm ovation from these Pittsburgh Pirate fans at Forbes Field. So Joe DeMaestri comes in now to play shortstop in this eighth inning. Well, let's see what will we'll develop. DeMaestri takes some tune-up tosses. The score, the Yankees seven and the Pirates four. And the Pirates, well, the tying run is represented by the batter, Dick Grove. DeMaestri is now the Yankee shortstop, so the Yankee infield has Boyer third, DeMaestri short, Richardson second, and Scoured at first. Pirate runners at first base, Bill Verdon, at second base, Gino Simone. The batter is Dick Grove. Chance up on the mound, looks down to Blanchard to pick up the sign, and here we go again. He sets, and the first pitch to Grove is a strike over the inside corner of the letters. Grove was all cranked up in that pitch, and then at the last moment snapped the hands back inside and took it. One strike. Olsiak edging up into the corner of the coaching, bo coaching box at third, uh, looking out there to check on Simoli. Mickey Vernon eagle-eyeing uh, the moves of Bill Verdon at first base, of course, uh, guarding against the moves of Bob Shantz. Scourin backs off the bag at first. Now the one-strike pitch to Grote. It's inside in the ball. One ball, one strike. A tremendous baseball game, and why not? This is uh, baseball's greatest show, the classic, the World Series, the 1 1 pitch to Grove. He swings a ground ball, base hit in the hole of the field. Around third, heading for the plate comes Simone. And he's over as Grove ripped one into left field, and it's now a 7 to 5 ball game. at Forbes Field are on their feet, around their feet as Stengel goes to the mound. You wouldn't say we were excited, would you? Stengel goes to the mound and is talking now with his catcher Blanchard and pitcher Bobby Shantz. Dick Grote has just ripped one. He really nailed it right on the button between the third baseman and the shortstop in the hole through the left field. Scored Simone from second base with a fifth run. Bird and hold second. Down to first is Grote. And out of the Yankee bullpen now comes right-hander Jim Coates. And that's going to be all for Bobby Shantz. This little fella has pitched a great ball game. He's pitched five full innings for the Yankees and is getting a fine hand as he goes to the dugout. Has allowed but four hits. Has walked one and given up a run. And coming in is Jim Coates, and this will be game number three for Jim Coates in the 1960 series. He has pitched five and two-third innings, allowed four base hits, has walked one and struck out three. Jim Coates, now on the mound for the New York Yankees. First batter to face, Jim Coates, will be Bob Skinner, who was able to play in the first game of this series for the Pirates and has been out ever since with a jammed thumb. 
coach during the 1960 season for Casey Stengel and the Yankees. Appeared in 35 ball games. He started 18 games and completed six. A total of 148 innings. Allowed 138 hits. He won 13. He lost three. And Skinner moved up to the plate. With Skinner facing the right-handed reliever, Jim Coates. And Pirate runners at first and second base. None out on the inning. One run in. It's the Yankees' seven. And now the Pirates' five. And here is Bob Skinner, who walked and then uh, bounced out to the first baseman to the pitcher covering and fly to right. He bunts third base side. It's going to be a beauty moving both runners up. Boyer comes in to field the bunt and throws to first in time to get Skinner. The sacrifice bunt sends Burden down to third base, throwed over to second base. The tying runs are in scoring position, and Rocky Nelson is coming to the plate. Skinner was called upon to sacrifice and dropped a perfect punt down the third base line, fielded by the third baseman Boyer, who threw the scout in time to retire Skinner for the first out, but it allowed Burden to move into third base and broke to second base, where the right kind of a base hit to tie up the old series. The Yankees lead at 7-5 to five right now, and Coates is into the move, the first pitch to Rocky Nelson. Inside low, and a good save by the Yankee catcher, Lance Coates spent the left hand hitting uh, Nelson a uh, hooking ball, breaking it down and in right at the shoe tops, and uh, Rocky had to really scramble to get out of the way. Terry is throwing down on the Yankee bullpen along with Luis Arroyo. One ball, no strikes to Nelson. Left hand batting, Pirate first baseman. Runners at second and third, one out. The move by Coates, the pitch to Nelson. He swings and it's a pop fly out in the shallow right field. Coming in is Maris, a little deeper than I thought. Tagging up is Verdon. The catch by Maris, and Verdon makes a false start and then backs off. And no wonder, a perfect throw from right fielder Roger Maris. Nelson hit a fly ball into a semi-deep right field, not nearly deep enough to allow Verdon to come on. And uh, with two down now, and Pirate Runners holding second and third. That drops the situation squarely in the lap of Roberto Clemente who this afternoon is looking for his first hit of the afternoon. He has delivered on eight occasions prior to this afternoon. All of his hits have been singles. He has knocked in two runs in the 60 series for Pittsburgh, right-handed batter. Stepping in against the right-hand tosses of Jim Coates, who just got Nelson on a fly ball to right fielder Roger Maris. There are two out now, and runners at second and third. Coates into the move. The first pitch coming down to Clemente. Here it is. Swinging a high foul ball out of play, up over the roots, strike one. Clemente appeared to be a little anxious on that one. Uh, it's right up around the peak of the cap, and he uh, ripped at it and fouled it away, and that brought Stengel charging out of that dugout again. Stengel startled all of the newspaper men the other day when he was asked before yesterday's game, what about Bob Friend? And Stengel said, I wish they'd have fired him back in June. And everybody said, what? How come? Stengel said, well, I'd have had him. One strike to Clemente. Blanchard joined uh, Stengel for that brief conference on the mound. One strike to Roberto Clemente. Pirate runners are hanging on the hassocks. Down at third base, Bill Bird, and out of second base, Dick Grove. Two out of the Pirate half of the eighth inning. The Yankees lead the ball game seven to five. And the Pirates, with a good opportunity, staring them in the face, now trying to capitalize on same. Colts looks down to Blanchard for the sign. Into the move. The uh, six foot four right hander starts the wind. And the one strike pitch to Clemente. Swinging another foul ball up over the roof and out of play. Strike two to Clemente. And again, that pitch appeared to be right up around the peak of the cap. Of course, we're sitting up on the mezzanine level at Forbes Field. But Clemente uh, is classified uh, among the bad ball hitters of baseball. He'll uh, pick a lot of those high pitches, low pitches, and uh, ram them somewhere for base knocks. Now your two-strike pitch coming down to Clemente. Coates into the move. The Yankee right-hander brings the arm down. Here's the pitch to Clemente. He swings in the ground foul, trickles down the first base side, and the count is two strikes, and that broke the bat, and Clemente uh, switched and grabbed the barrel end of the bat and then snapped the handle of the bat right off as he, in exasperation, uh, broke it on his way to the dugout. Two strikes to the right fielder, Roberto Clemente. Clemente hit 
314 on the season for the Pirates. Knocked in 94 runs. And he's got a couple of ducks on the pond right now that he'd dearly love to knock in. The tying runs are out there on base for the Pirates. With two out in the last half of the eighth inning. Burden, the runner at third base. Grove, the runner at second base. A count of two strikes to right-hand batting Clemente. And the Yankee right-hander Colts into the move. The pitch coming to Clemente. It's low and outside of all. One and two. In typical World Series fashion, this one appears to be going right down to the wire. Now Blanchard pumping out the sign to Coates, who wigwags with that glove just a little bit. He wants to see that sign again. Now the Colts is into the move, the one-two to Clemente. He swings the ground ball, slowly hit off the first base side, charging a scout. He makes a pickup, there'll be no play, and a run scores. up on the ball, had no chance of a play at the plate because Burden broke with the uh, crack of the bat, and then realized that he couldn't get over there in time to get Clemente at first base, so the infield hit by Clemente has driven in the sixth pirate run, down to third base goes Grove, two out, it's the Yankees seven, the Pirates six, and the batter will be catcher Al Smith. Smith. Steps in with two down and Pirate runners at first and third. And this ballpark is going crazy. Coach into the set. He throws. Smith takes a strike right down the pipe. And Smitty was giving it a good look. One strike to right-hand batting Hal Smith. Clemente hit a little dribbler off the first base side, wide of the bag at first, and legged it out into a base hit. And, of course, Herndon was able to score the sixth run. Now the one-strike pitch coming to Smith. It's high on the ball. One ball, one strike. Well, the pirate opportunity in this ball game, in this uh, inning, came up about on a bad hop that hit Kubek in the throat and knocked him out of the ball game. Now the one-one pitch coming down to Hal Smith. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Strike two, and he really pulled the trigger. One ball, two strikes to Hal Smith, who gave it the big ripple, the Sunday punch, and couldn't find it. The tying run is at third base in the person of Dick Grove. The go-ahead run is out there at first in the person of Roberto Clemente. And now the set, the one-two pitch coming to Hal Smith. Coach throws. He started a swing and held back and has taken high for a ball. A check swing and a ball two. Two and two now. And for just a split second, every move of the Pirate dugout came to a stop on that call up there at the plate. But it was a high pitch, and Smith uh, held back on the swing. So the count is two and two. And Coates into the stretch. He sets. And the 2-2 two -two to Smith. He swings a long fly ball deep to left field. I don't know. It might go out of here. It is going, going, going. Again, have the lead. A tremendous wallop by Smith. And 
game. The only reason that he was playing is that Burgess had been taken out earlier for a pinch runner. He just drove a ball over the 406-foot sign in toward left center field. Farrell went back, and all Yogi did, could do was stand there and just be helpless and watch the ball sail out over the ballpark and into Shenley Park for a three-run homer, and the Pirates now lead by a score of 9-7. to seven. A new pitcher, Ralph Terry, has come on as Smith delivered the knockout blow to lean, lanky Jim Coates. That's the story of Forbes Field. Harold Smith ripped into a pitch, a two-and-two two offering, and hit it out over the left field wall. As the Pirate players will tell you, Smith hit one far out into the afternoon. Over the 406-foot sign to score Grote with a tying run. Clemente with the eighth run and himself with a ninth run. And when Smith got to the dugout, it's a wonder he could stand up. He received, as you could well expect, a tremendous pummeling and back thumping from uh, the excited Pittsburgh Pirates. And the noise here at Forbes Field still has not died down. Terry has come on in relief of Coach. Coach has worked two-thirds of an inning. Has allowed two base hits and two runs. Didn't strike anybody out, didn't walk anybody. And now Ralph Perry faces Don Hope. Two out, none on, and the Pirates have bounced back and lead nine to seven. The pitch is a ball outside high. No one, of course, needs to be reminded of that all-important Yankee night yet to come. One ball, no strikes to Hope. The pitch is a curveball. Caught the outside corner above the knees, and the count is a ball and a strike. Hal Smith, in his moment of glory, his first World Series home run, and I mean he hit it every inch of the way. Now the 1-1. Hope swings another high fly to left field. Moving over toward the foul line, Barris. Glasses it down. Near the foul line, Barris looks up. He's got it. And that's it for the Pirates of the eighth inning. Well, that's the story at the end of eight innings of play. The score, the Pittsburgh Pirates 9, the New York Yankees 7. Attention. The commander-in-chief wants a car. Yes, sir, General. You realize, of course, it must be the best there is, and I am speaking globally. Yes, sir, and I've got it. Cadillac for 1961, a new inspiration for the motoring world, and I'm speaking globally. Cadillac, a car of timeless beauty, uncompromising luxury, and truly matchless performance. It's your car, under the hood, everything is perfection. Your car, I check the inside, it passes inspection. My car, trimness and crispness add to Cadillac's beauty. It's above and beyond the call of duty. Chances car, you'll find your new car at GM. Cause there's more to choose from. Value and choice from GM. A Cadillac for the Commander-in-Chief. Yes, my wife will be in to pick it up herself. From out of the pirate bullpen in the right field corner to face the New York Yankees in the ninth inning comes Bob Friend. This will be his third game. His first relief of performance, he has started two. Has pitched a total of six innings, allowed seven earned runs, has 0-2 on the series, and Danny Murtaugh is demonstrating his belief and his confidence in Bob Friend and sends him to the mound in the ninth inning to protect a two-run lead that means a world championship. It is still, of course, if Friend is able to hold the Yankees, the game will belong to Elroy Face, and the loss would have to go to Colts if things conclude as they now stand. In the ninth inning, for the Yankees, it will be Bobby Richardson to lead off against Bob Friend. We have been informed by the press PA that Kubek has been taken to the hospital for further examination and treatment if necessary. 
Bobby Richardson steps in. Bob Friend on the mound for the Pirates. Delivers, and the first pitch is a strike. Right back. Swing and a fly ball to shallow left center. It may drop in, and it does drop in for the base hit. Richardson opens the Yankee half of the ninth inning with a looping single to shallow left center. And the Yankees move right back. And out of the uh, Yankee dugout, on the third base side, comes the former Pittsburgh Pirate, who incidentally holds the Pirate record for home runs hit by a left-handed batting first baseman, 27. Dale Long is coming on now. This will be his second at-bat in the series, has yet to hit. And in the Yankee season, in a total of 26 ball games, Dale Long hit for a total of 366 with three home runs and 10 runs batted in. Dale Long is batting now for Demetri. A power hitter, a left-handed batter, and he can reach that right field barrier here in Forbes Field with any one swing. Now the lead by Richardson, the set, the pitch by Friend is swung on and foul ball is going to be out of play. Strike one. Dale Long, powerfully built, left-handed swinger, waiting now, the one-strike pitch from Bob Fred. Here it is, high and away on a ball. One and one. Incidentally, we want to remind you the broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. And now the 1-1 swing and a line drive. It's going to be a base hit out of the right field corner. Clemente plays it on the first hop. Richardson holds second and long delivers with a line single to right field and the Yankees are back at it again. Back-to-back base hits and the Yanks have the tying runs at first and second. And Roger Maris slated to step in. And the Pirate bullpen in the right field corner, Harvey Haddix and Vinegar Ben Mizell are warming. And the sign has gone to the bullpen, and it will be Harvey Haddix. Bob Friend has certainly been as unlucky as a pirate pitcher could be in this World Series. He is out of the ball game, faced two men, they both hit safely. And now leaves the ball game for Harvey Haddix. This for Harvey will be his second uh, 1960 World Series appearance. He started one ball game and won it. He pitched six and one third innings, allowed five base hits. In the year, Haddix had a record of 11 wins and 10 defeats. Harvey Haddix is coming on now. He was the winning pitcher in game number five. And as we look to the Yankee bullpen in the left field corner, Casey Stengel has Whitey Ford warming. What a seventh and concluding game to a World Series. Haddix up on the mound, and the first batter to face him will be Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, and Yogi Berra in that order. Going back very quickly to check on game number five, you will recall that Roger Maris hit a home run off Hardy ha- Harvey Haddix in the third inning of that fifth game. Haddix completing his tune-up tosses. And the Yankees have demonstrated once again that power that brought them along to their American League pennant that saw them sweep 15 at the end of the year and win. And now here in the ninth inning with the Pirates 
out in front by a score of 9-7, to seven, virtue of a tremendously exciting three-run home run by pirate catcher Hal Smith. Suddenly see that lead in danger again. And Harv Haddix has been called upon by Danny Murtaugh to see if he can stop the rampaging Yankees in the top of the ninth. He was uh, Haddix, one of the principal actors in one of baseball's most uh, exciting episodes, May 26, 1959 in Milwaukee, for 12 innings. This is the fellow who set the Braves down in order, only to lose the perfect game, a no-hitter, and the contest itself one to nothing in the 13th inning on an error, an intentional walk, and a base hit. Well, here is Haddix. In an equally dramatic situation, with Long at first base and Richardson at second base, Maris steps in against Harvey Haddix. None out in the top half of the ninth inning. Haddix throws low, ball one. Believe me, the Pirate fans at Ford Field are right up on the edge of their chair. The Yankees have the tying runs on first and second base with none out. And a count of one ball. No strikes to Roger Maris. Haddix. All ready to go. He throws. Swing and a high pop-up. Right behind the plate. Hal Smith is moving over under it. He's got a lot of room and a lot of time. He's got it. One out. And more trouble to come. In the person of Mickey Mantle. Mantle will face Haddix as a right-handed swinger. And Mantle this afternoon has two base hits in the ball game. With a run batted in, he has scored a run. The Pirates lead 9-7. to seven. One out. Top of the ninth. Yankee runners at first and second base. Mantle steps in. And Haddix looks down to battery mate Hal Smith. About all ready to go. Maddox now into the abbreviated stretch. He sets, and the first pitch to Mantle is down low. Ball one. Vera in the on-deck circle off the third base side for the Yankees. Pirates nine, Yankees seven. One away. Richardson, the runner at second base for the Yankees. At first base, Dale Long. And Harvey Haddix out of the bullpen trying to stop the Bombers. The little left-hander into the abbreviated stretch again. He kicks and throws, and Mantle swings, and there's a line drive base hit out into the right field alley. Chasing the ball down is Clemente around third, heading for the plate comes Richardson. Clemente bobbled the ball around, down to third base, goes long, and Richardson scores the Yankees' eighth run. Long goes to third base. Mantle has singled his third hit of the afternoon. And his second run batted in. He hit one down the alley, a line drive in right center. Clemente got to the ball, tried to grab it. Uh, while running full tilt and batted the ball out in front of him. Long came uh, zooming right along into third base. Mantle holds first. One out, runners on the corners at first and third. And at the plate, Yogi Berra, who bombed one into the right field seat, a three-run home run back in the sixth inning to snatch away a four-to-one lead that the Pirates at that time enjoyed and put the Yankees in front five-to-four. Here is Berra. He has one hit in three official at-bats. Long, the tying run, edges off third base. Mantle is on at first. The set by Haddix, the pitch to Barry, is low and away on a ball. One ball, no strikes. Ninety feet away, here on the top of the ninth inning, is the tying run. And now time call momentarily. Casey Stengel out in front of the dugout, and I think he wants Gil McDougald into the ball game as a runner for Dale Long, and that's the story. McDougald will now run for Dale Long at third base. McDougald replaces Long as the runner for New York at third in the uh, top of the ninth inning. One away, Barra waiting the one nothing pitch from Harvey Haddix. Mantle, the runner at first base. The Pirates, nine. The Yankees, eight. And the pitch coming down to Barra is outside. Low for a ball. 2-0 and oh now. Well, this is what you always hope for in a World Series. Baseball at its most exciting. 
And that is exactly what we have this afternoon. And now Haddock's ready to go again. The count, two balls, no strikes to Barry. He throws. Swing and a drive, hit right to first base. He's got a tag up the first base, and then tag. Man, will go. He missed him, and the tying run scores. is safe at first base in one of the weirdest plays, and we'll go back and tell you what happened. Barra ripped the line drive down the first base side. Stewart, or rather uh, Nelson, the first baseman, fielded the ball in the first top and tagged up. That made Barra the second out of the inning. Then he tried to tag Mantle, who dove back to the bag, and he missed him. And while so doing, the tying run scores. Caught by Nelson. And he tried to tag Mantle coming back in to double him up to end the ball game and missed the tag. And now here is Scourin. Down low, ball one. Both of those runs, of course, are charged to uh, Bob Friend. The game has been tied on the top of the ninth. Two out. Mantle still that runner at first base. And the pitch to Scourin. Swinging a ground ball up the third base side. Going hard to his right. Grote has it. Throws the second. They force Mantle coming in for the final out. But the Yankees rampage back with two runs on three hits. No errors and a man left. And the score at the end of eight and one half innings of play. It's the New York Yankees nine and the Pittsburgh Pirates nine. Here, with more space, more spunk, more room in the trunk, the new 61 Chevy Corvair. Corvair gives you peppier performance with greater economy in a complete line that includes four new wagons unlike anything ever built in America before. See the 61 Chevy Corvair at your quality Chevrolet dealers. Stop in today and see the new Corvair. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY 810 on your dial and WGFM, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. Here's the official weather forecast for interior eastern New York and adjacent western New England. Mostly fair and cool with scattered frost tonight. The low overnight readings in the 30s and low 40s. Tomorrow, Friday, partly cloudy and a little warmer. The high, 65 to 75. half of the ninth inning. Changes made by the Yankees. McDougal goes to third base. Cletus Boyer moves over to play shortstop. And Ralph Carey, of course, on the mound, will be facing Mazeroski. And to go over that uh, bear a play once again, it was a hard hit drive down the first base side. The Nelson fielded on the first hop and tagged the bag at first. That eliminated Barra. He was out. And then uh, Mantle could have been in a rundown, but it was not the case. He dove back safely to first base. Here's a ball one. Too high now to Mazeroski. And the Yankees have tied the game. In the top of the ninth inning. Well, a little while ago, when we mentioned uh, that this one, uh, in typical fashion, was going right to the wire, little did we know. Mark Dittbar throws. Here's a swing and a high fly ball going deep to left. This may do it. Back to the wall goes Barra. It is. Over the back home and the Pirates win. pitch over the left field fence at Forbes Field to win the 1960 World Series for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 
by a score of 10 to nothing. Once again, that final score, the Pittsburgh Pirates, the 1960 World Champions, defeat the New York Yankees, the Pirates 10, and the Yankees 9. General Motors offers you cars with more solid value built into them, more breadth of choice than you've ever known. Yes, it's... Value and choice from GM. So today's the day to see your quality GM dealer. Back at Forbes Field, it is all over. In one of the most dramatic finishes on history, Bill Mazeroski has hit his second World Series home run over the left field barrier, 406 feet away, and the Pirates are the 1960 World Champions of Baseball. And Jack, you could employ a lot of script writers and pay a lot of money, but try and write a better finish to a ball game or a more exciting one. Chuck from the very first pitch down here to the last one, which Mazeroski hit over the 406 sign to win it and make the Pirates World Champions. This ball game was filled with drama, excitement. It had everything, and the Pirates are the world champions of 1960. On Billy Mazeroski's home run, leading off the last half of the ninth inning, the final score, 10-9. to nine. The Pirates had 10 runs, 11 hits, no errors. They left only one man on base all afternoon. The Yankees had nine runs on 13 hits, one error, six men left on. The winning pitcher, Harvey Haddix, his record now 2-0 and in the World Series. The loser, Ralph Terry, his record nothing in two. 36,683 fans were here. And that Mazeroski was jumping around the bases when he saw the ball disappear into Shenley Park like a little kid with a brand new toy. And there's no reason uh, not to do anything like that because that fella gave himself and his teammates the 1960 Baseball World Championship and also about $8,500 a piece or $9,000 a piece, something like that. And now to wind up this World Series broadcast, let's pick up Bob Prince and some of those victorious, happy pirates. Bob, take it away. Here's the president of the National League. Come on up here, Mr. Giles. We want Mr. Warren Giles, the president of the National League, to come up here. Give you a help up. Come on, Danny. Warren, I know how happy you are about this World Series. Oh, I tell you, this is... This is one of the biggest ones yet, and it shows what teamwork and guts and determination can do because the Pirates have shown that all year, and they beat a great Yankee ball club, a great Yankee ball club. No question about it. Thank you very much, President Boyd. Okay, Warren well, Giles. congratulations to you because I know how you were pulling. Oh, man, I was. Hey, Hal Smith, come up here a minute, Hal. Come up here on television, coast to coast. And uh, Hal, on TV a minute. Wait a minute. I want him on my TV. We're fighting photographers. Hal, a great home run you hit. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going coast to coast. The folks want to get a good look at you. And it was a long, day. wonderful, boy. It was a huh? wonderful day. And, of course, Woo! I never thought we'd come back like we did, but come back we did. Huh? We come back just like we always did all year, didn't we? That's right, Hal. Thank you. Here's Bill Mazeroski. Oh, yeah. the game winning blow. Hey, wasn't that something, Billy? Oh, I can't even talk. I'm so tired. <laughs> What'd you do? You didn't have to run very far, did you, boy? Oh, what, was the, what, was, what was the pitch you hit, Bill? It was a high pass. A high fastball. That did it. And the Pirates are the world's champions for the first time since 25. Joe Brown and Don Hook. Here's our general manager, Joe Brown. Don Hook, one of the seen coast-to-coast Tiger, a tremendous victory. Uh, Bob, this is one of the greatest team efforts I've ever seen, I'll tell you that. And I'm awful proud to be a part of it. Well, I know that they're all proud to have you there. And Joe Brown, what a great great job you did as general manager of this fine championship. Guys around you here did it, Bob. God almighty, it was just wonderful. Uh, I think it was just sheer guts against power, and the guts, the guts came through. This is, I, I, I'm speechless. I, I know you are. I know how you feel. Here's Tom Johnson, Dick Grote. We're going coast to coast, Dick. I know you're real happy. Oh, about I feel wonderful, Bob. It's the greatest ball club in the world. World's champion, Dick Grote. How's it sound? Wonderful. It's the greatest feeling in the world to be the world champion. They thought we were dead, but we bounced back, didn't we, Bob? Yes, you did. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Dick Grote. Let me get Vern Law over here. I want to have Bird Law come over. Tom Johnson, yep. I've got my scorecard. Well, we had them all the way, didn't we? It was real easy. This is Tom Johnson, the vice president of the Pittsburgh Ball Club. Tom, I know how happy you are. Oh, you can see that, Bob. This is a great ball club, and everyone's done a marvelous job. 
Well, all year, and it's great to bring a championship to the world of Pittsburgh. Well, it certainly is, and here's a guy that pitched his heart out, went as far as his left leg would go, Vern Law. Deacon, I know you were disappointed, but you're happy that you're with the world. You're not kidding, Bob. I'm feeling great right now. You betcha. Well, I want to congratulate you on your two great victories and the way you hung in there and never cried a bit about that left ankle. I know it bothered you. That's fine, Bob. Thank you. Vern Law, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Billy Burden, our fleet-footed center fielder. Wasn't that a dandy, Billy? That was the best, Bob. I don't think there's ever been a better one. Well, I don't know if there's there has been either. I'm glad that we're not getting ourselves thrown apart. Here's our winning pitcher, Harvey Haddix. Harvey, you made it too in the World Series, big boy. Oh, it's wonderful. I've never had anything more wonderful happen to me. Well, I know you, you have, have it. Bob. Thank you. And here's How little... sweet it is, Bob. Yeah, here's here's, here's, here's our little, 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 little Spanky Burgess. That's the two base hits today, and they were big ones, Smoke. Yes, nice so, well, that's a great thrill, Bob. A big thrill. Yeah. We'll see you back next okay. year, huh? What do you say, Gunner? Well, dog, how are you? Bob Skinner, our left fielder, finally got back in action. How's that thumb? Fine, fine. They had to get the dog in there to win, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that world championship changed the hands real quick, didn't it? It sure did. It's all healed now. All right, Bob, thank you. Good luck to you. Best of luck. And here's Roy Face, who made four great appearances in the World Series and had the misfortune to see one go out against him by Yogi Berra. But, uh, Roy... You didn't mind that as long as we won. That's right. As long as the team wins, don't make it difference what happens to me. I'm, I'm happy the team won. Beat Gino. the Bucs. Can't beat the Bucs, can they? No, sir. Can't beat the bad Buckles. I'll tell you that. That's this is Gino Simoli. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, we got them. We got them. They broke all the records, and we won the game. How about that? <laughs> There's a good one. Broke right. all the records, and we won we the won game. We won the game. Right here. Yeah, that's it. Here's Mayor uh, Joe Barr. Uh, Mayor, uh, congratulations. I don't know whether my wife can live or not. I hit her when Hell Smith made that home run. Well, what that's you do when way. Mazeroski came up. Thank uh, you, Mayor Barr. Yeah. Here's the president of the ball club, Mr. John Galbraith. And uh, Mr. Galbraith. I just want to ask you one question. Yes. You asked me. Have we paid our debt to the city, the people of Pittsburgh? I think you have, and you've given your voice to it, too, haven't you? Give everything I've got. You wouldn't trade a Kentucky Derby victory for this, John. You're, you're trying to get me when I'm vulnerable. All right, okay. Which, which way did you get in? Yeah, this is I've been trying to get you in there. This is good. Rob Rice, our traveling good. secretary. Robert, we're going to see you coast to coast. Very good. Great, Rob. Just the best. Good to see you. I can't talk. All right, well, I'm not going to be able to do much more. And the commissioner of baseball, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ford Frick. Commissioner, without question, one of the most exciting World Series in all time. Well, this is my 39th, and I never saw a finish like that one, Bob. Never. Did you ever see a World Series where we got uh, the Pirates got beaten so badly and then turn right around and come on to take it as they did? Well, you know, World Series, like everything else, there's only one that counts. That's that last run that wins the final game. <laughs> well, it was a thriller, and Commissioner Frick, thank you very that much. Was terrific. It was a terrific series, well played, and uh, beautifully handled, I thought. Thank you, Commissioner Ford Frick. Here's Rocky Nelson, one of the stars in our ball game. Rocky, I know how delighted you are to be a member of the World Champion Park. It's really wonderful, Bob. You can't beat it, I'll tell you, when you're on top. We just finished a great year, that's all. It was a team effort, and it was a team effort today. Everybody hit the ball. All right, Rocky, thank you. Here's Danny Mertz. Uh, you Irishman, you, you did it. By golly, Bob, what a finish. But uh, we've been doing that all the year, and I think the fans are looking forward to it. Uh, well, let me tell you. Well, thank you very much, Dan, John Galbraith. And I'll just say thank you to everybody. I hope you fans have enjoyed hearing from these very happy world champion Pittsburgh Pirates.